Welcome back to Macro Dosing. It's Thursday. It is March 2nd. And we're back in studio. We got everybody on the horn today. Arian is live from Houston, Texas. And Whoa. we got a packed studio. I'm excited to get into today's episode. The Murdaugh Murders. This Murdaugh is a great murders. one. Dun, dun, dun. Let's, let's temper expectations. This is going to be a, an average episode at best. <laughs> and then we'll just crush those fucking expectations. All right, we're back. We're bad. It's Thursday, March 2nd. See you later, February. Onward, we're getting into spring. March comes in like a lion, right? Is that what the old saying is? I've never heard that saying. In like a lion, out like a lamb? That's what I've heard about March. Stay tuned. We'll see if that's true or not. You've never heard yeah, that, never Aaron? Heard no. In like a lion, out like a lamb. Yeah. Yeah. I've we... heard I've heard I'd rather be a lion for a day than a lamb that lives forever. I've heard that one. Mm. I like that. I'd rather die on my on my feet than live on my knees. Unless you're Nancy Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> she did both. <laughs> she she did. Good for her. <laughs> uh it's good to it's good to have everybody's smiling faces in the studio today we are recording this on tuesday just so you know in case anything major happens on wednesday um sorry maybe you guys can can punch in and and do like a little addendum to the episode if something crazy happens tomorrow but uh it's tuesday as we're recording it we're going to get into murder murders in a little bit there is breaking news and that's patrick kane is going to be a new york ranger it well it's not breaking news it's we, only breaking we've known if about you don't this. watch big team hours exactly and you don't follow me on Twitter. But uh, we, we've known this since Thursday. Um, the deal was done on Thursday. And now now it's uh, it's official, if you want to give it to the insiders. But we've known. We've, we've been here. We, we're ready to go. 88's in, uh, in New York. Avery Scoops. How about it? Avery Scoops. That's, all, that's about all I know. I'm not an insider. I just know a couple things or two about the Rangers inside. Yeah, you gave me that scoop. You gave me that. I put in that future live on Big T Mowers. Great stream, by the way. We're we doing that again this week. Uh, um, I don't think so. I don't think this week. Next week, it's going to be a lot of a lot of tall grass. To take I've, a week off. I've taken out a loan for the business. What does that you mean? You take out a loan. Mm -hmm. You refinance. Yeah. What did you use the loan money on? So, I took out a ten thousand dollar loan, thinking I could buy the nine thousand dollar lawnmower I wanted. But then right after I did that, it wasn't letting me select any lawnmower. So I'm not sure. I, I have to go back in. I haven't been in the game since. So I have to go in and see. Uh, but I took out a $10,000 loan to help uh, jumpstart the business. Well, okay. what can you use it for if you can't use it for lawnmowers? Just paying? That's a great question. We're, uh, I'm, um, I'm eager to find out as well. How much interest are you paying on that $10,000? Uh, it wasn't too bad, I don't think. Is there principal too or just interest? How many times can you refi? I don't know. <laughs> I want to know about and the, get the game. game. What happens if you don't pay them back? They take your shit? It's a good question. Um, we could try that. Get repoed? Maybe. I don't know. That'd be funny if there was like a, an integrated repo simulator and the person that ran that business could then invade your game and take your mower. They might like garnish my wages. Yeah. <laughs> but you're the boss. Uh, I, don't know. I don't know who. I don't even know who I took out the loan from. I just took out a loan. Okay. This is it PPP. I thought you worked for somebody like named Victoria or something like that. No, I work for me. Oh, I, I have I an employee. Oh, uh, okay. I, f I forget her name. Something similar to that. I also found out something um, similar to Victoria. Yeah. It's <laughs> Valerie. A, it's a female name. Uh, okay. That's what I meant by similar. <laughs> um, start with a V. Uh, I have like eight applications waiting from prospective employees. Um, I think I hired one of them. So we're up to three in the big team mowers family. Okay. Oh, it's wow. exciting. Yeah. We might do a stream. I want to talk to you about that off the air, but yes, we got some big things. Yeah, coming. I think, you, I think you just pumped Avery up into doing it. <laughs> well, we, we, we got some big things coming for Fantastic big team mowers. Stream. We're setting, we're setting things up. And then Aaron, you're, you're coming to New York next week. Is that true? Uh, that is true. All anxiety aside, it's true. I don't know what the fuck is going on, but the last like three plane trips, I've just been having mad anxiety. But I'm still gonna come, yeah. All right, we've got a, a big guest coming in the studio next week, so I'm um, I'm excited for that. I don't know what direction this is gonna go, <laughs> but uh, it's a, it's gonna be a great guest. I'll put it that way. When uh, when are we doing the golf jump? Because 
getting good, bro. Like I, I hit two birdies yesterday, bro. So I think the, what the plan is. Um, don't, don't, don't skip over my accomplishments, Avery. I'm not. I hit two birdies yesterday, bro. It's amazing. I actually saw a, I saw a stat that um that like golfers only average like one more birdie than like the than the average golfer though. Did did you see that stat? I gotta find it. It was like a golfers, crazy stat. It was the like difference between one, like a scratch golfer and a professional golfer. Yeah, is like two birdies. Yeah. So Aaron, did you get your two birdies? Were they on par fours, par fives? Uh, one was on a par five. The other one was on a par three. That's awesome. Part threes are really hard, but I hit this. Oh my God, I hit a great shot. But if the putt was like 10, I was like 10 feet out. I stuck it, but I was like 10 feet. I was like 180 out. Sorry, once, yeah, 180 out. And the most impressive thing for me is that you didn't really start that long ago. Yeah, I'm making up a lot of ground, but I'm also having a lot of free time. So, oh, no, I played today too, right? Get up early, go, go, go play. And, and granted, it's a country club, so there's only like 350 members. And so, like, it's kind of it's really laxed and so but still the same golf rules apply right there's a threesome ahead of me and i catch up to them around hole seven right and like you know i'm just sitting in you know like, it's like when you hit a drive and then you're just sitting in a fairway waiting for them to finish usually they let you play through if, they, if there's a three or four or something and you're just by yourself usually you let people play through because like they'll be behind you the whole time these dudes didn't let me play through the whole day that's I played up. the. It's fucking. I, I wanted to. I was like, they're just dweeby. That's a dweeby thing to do, because it's like even if the the fucked up part is like I didn't wait too long, but they changed the, the whole style of play because they knew I was behind them. So like they would just like hit. They wouldn't even look at each other. Like two people shooting at the same time type vibes. Yeah. And I'm like, why would you want to play like that? Enjoy your round. Just let me play through, dog. It's not that serious. Just a real dweeby thing to do. And then he tried to say what's up to me afterwards, and I just gave him the stale face. Nah, fam. Sometimes people just they get. It's like a challenge to their masculinity if you're letting yeah. somebody else play through. That's most yeah. of my round is just letting various people play through behind me. Yeah, and it's and it's weird. It's weird because it's like I, I was playing really well too, so it was like I was in the driveway like almost every time, like while they were on the green, you know. What I'm so they see me on the they I mean, they would see me on the fairway, not the drive, the fairway. They see me on the fairway waiting for them to shoot. And then as soon as they run to the green, like as soon as there was one dude in a green shirt, as soon as he hit his putt, he didn't even wait for the other two. He just went to the next tee. I was like, why do y'all play like, it's not even fun playing like that. Like you enjoy golf, like with your friends when you're like got money on a hole and everybody into it. You know, that's fun. Don't, don't rush it just to not get past. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a race dog. It's golf. Yeah. We got to play. I, so I'm going to be down in Houston for the final four that Saturday before the games. I might have some time. Yeah, that's what we were trying to figure out. If PFT schedule works, I'm going to fly out and film you two playing. Oh, we'll set it up. We'll set it up. We'll, we'll do that at my club. It'll be dope. I like so that. Fancy. I like, yeah, you can find us in the club. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Living like real Democrats. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. It's going to be amazing. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to that. I got to get back in the simulator. It's been bad weather here. In New Again, March comes in like a lion so i'm dealing with that right now and uh we got some snow that's nice it's always nice to have that first bit of snow of the year yeah you know what's my favorite part about march what's that saint patrick's day and if you haven't checked it out yet check out the macrodosing saint patrick's day gear billy i love your shirt right now i'm wearing the dr o'shaughnessy the irish stoner shirt kiss me i'm irish it's actually really cool we made it in a dr mcgilligutty's type style so check it out for all you Irish stoners to just represent the the green on the greenest day. That's good. I like that. Good one. Uh, check it out. And yeah, it is. It's St. Patrick's Day. It's coming around the corner. Do you have, how many weeks off are you going to take, Billy? Uh, I'll probably have the flu a couple days. Yeah. But shouldn't be more than that. Pre-planning for the flu? Irish flu. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited about about everything that we've got coming up. It's going to be a big few weeks here. Um, so we got a big show today, too, The Murdoch Murders. If you haven't watched on Netflix, check it out. Also, just I've been watching all the Murdoch content that mm -hmm. I can get my hands on. Every TikTok I scroll, it's him. Yeah. Uh, th they're a very unique-looking bunch. Yes. Bad and look for gingers. It's a very bad look Terrible for gingers. Look for, gingers. for sure. I now don't trust gingers at all. <laughs> yeah, it, it did set the ginger cause back years. Yeah. Years and years. I now think every ginger has committed a murder. 
about, and you got what about and, you, and you're super into St. Patrick's I'm, Day. Uh, Damn, that's, 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 <laughs> that's I'm not a ginger. Look at your look at your. Beard. He's still in the now. Look at, look at my hair. Years. But but your beard. Okay, there's a difference between being redheaded and ginger. I think I don't think that you're a ginger, but you do have red hair. He's, no, I don't I have a red beard. I have red a beard, Auburn stuff. tinted beard. I have brown <laughs> hair. It's reddish. It's brown. You can see on the like where it changes. Let's get drastically. It, we'll put it up to a vote. We'll put a poll on. It is crazy how. Oh yeah, let's leave it to morons on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ari- I mean, these aren't remotely similar colors. I mean, Big T, you you do have red hair. It's okay. Um, I'm gonna send that's it. hair. Your no, beard is hair. Yeah, no one's no one's knocking your hair. The hair on my head is not red. But you always wear a hat, so people assume. I mean, you can see it right here. I know, but like people don't look at that part of the hair. They they just think that the so that people the carpet matches are ignorant. The drapes. When you when you wear Tennessee orange, it really sets off that hair. <laughs> he Big T doesn't act like a ginger though. He's good in my book. Whoa, Whoa what does that mean? What that? Whoa, Whoa, what is he's that not mean? a murderer. <laughs> yes, I might be if y'all keep saying dumb shit. <laughs> <laughs> Proves the point. Uh, Aaron, what have you been up to these last couple of days? We missed you on Monday. Uh, I've been chilling. My daughter had to uh, go through a little a dentist operation. And so she was, that's the saddest shit in the world. If you got a kid out there and they go through the dentist, it's just traumatizing. She just, she, it didn't even hurt her. It was just like the loud noises scared her and they were in her mouth. And so it was just really, she was crying and it broke my heart. That's my baby, man. Yeah, the dentist is scary. For sure. And there are kids yeah. specializing dentists. And but at the end of the day, you can't really make that a friendly procedure. Nah, nah. Nope. Ale- and, and so she couldn't even finish it. They had, we're gonna have to go to a specialist because she was just so freaked out. Mm. A lot of kids are, are afraid of getting their hair cut too. I never understood that. Why why do kids hate getting their hair cut? They think it's gonna hurt? I think I think it's just the noise. I think kids just are scared of, of big noises. Like my son was was scared to get his hair cut, but then, you know, we kind of talked to him talked him down and showed it or didn't hurt and once you show them it doesn't hurt I, they kind of calm down a little bit well my kids anyway i can't speak for everybody else's you know some orthodox jewish families don't cut their kids hair until they're three years old well how old do you get your hair cut how old do you how old are you when you get your first haircut anyway well it's usually so like for me my mom would give me haircuts with a bowl type stuff <laughs> that makes sense that you had a i need to cut. see these pictures and then what happened was that once you got to like to go get a big boy haircut with dad and you go to the barber shop and like because you wanted to be like adults so you like didn't like freak out in the barber shop yeah whereas like when mom was doing it it was chill but like when like the all the razors came out like yeah i think it's like a scissor razor fear yeah, I remember my, when my dad was teaching me how to shave, he just gave me one of the razors that didn't have a razor in it. So I just pretend that I was shaving. I thought that I was actually shaving my face next to him for a while. And then I just never I just never got a razor. I never needed Wait, one. Wait, time out. You was getting razors at as a kid? Well, so when my dad would he'd be like, "Okay, I got to go shave now." And I'd be like, "I want to sh- I want to shave like that." No, 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 no. No, I'm, t- I'm talking to Billy. I'm talking to Billy. He said it's scary when the razors came out. You was getting razors as a, as a kid? No, like, you know, you know at the end of like your haircut, they take the razor out and like line up the edges. As a kid, I don't remember. Well, I wanted a big, I wanted a big boy haircut, like where <laughs> it wasn't like a bowl. Like I wanted my, like I wanted a shape up. I wanted like mm-hmm. sides. I wanted to look like sure. an adult. You want to fade? I, I wanted a buzz cut. I was like, yeah, yeah. Gosh, I, I could be misremembered. I don't. I just, I just don't remember the razor joint. No, you know when they take I remember the edges. No, I, I yeah. definitely. I mean, I get, I get, I get edged up all the time. Been doing haircuts for years. I just don't remember them doing it on me as a kid, like as, with the with the switchblade razor jump. With the hot foam. Wrong. The, no, the hot foam does feel good. Well, basically, once Amazing. the once hot towel the, on the face. Just remembering my first haircut, like the barber, like I was like, "Oh, it's your first haircut ever that your mom's not doing," and he like brought it, he pulled out all the stops. I would have loved to see Billy get his haircut oh. when, with a bowl as a child. I literally had a bowl over my head. My mom would cut it. That's awesome. <laughs> but you look sweet. Um, a couple of things I wanted to get into before we jump into the Murdoch murders. 
the Oscars are putting a plan in place to protect all the uh, presenters, everybody on stage in case Will Smith comes up on stage and slaps them this year. So, <laughs> so they have like a, a detailed security plan. And Chris Rock has started to talk about um, about what's what happened that night. Have we reached a point where like, I don't know, I feel like Will Smith, his name was way, way hotter a year ago right after the slap and then it all cooled off. If anybody wanted to hire Will Smith, they should have already done it already, right? He hasn't been working that much, but I feel like with the buzz that was going on about Will Smith, they missed a year of market, like free marketing for Will Smith. Well, wasn't he in that movie recently? I don't think they they didn't tape that after the oh, okay. after the slap though. But I don't think I, I don't know. I don't think he wanted to be like as pre- prevalent after that because he was he kind of went into a hole afterwards. You know what I'm saying? Kind of hit about it. Um, and, t- and waited it for it to die down a little bit. Because I don't think he was very proud of that moment. But I don't think anybody's... I mean, even if you do, I don't think any significant is anybody going to look at Will Smith like, I'm not going to support Will Smith because he slapped Chris Rock. You know, even though it's wrong, you know, I don't agree with the jump. But, you know, I don't even think Chris Rock... What did he say about it before I... He's just... He's off. he's trying it out in his stand-up. So he's just like, yeah, oh, people boy. ask me if it hurt. Yeah, it hurt real bad. He played Muhammad Ali. I played Pookie. <laughs> <laughs> he's one of the goats man yeah nah i don't think I mean, I mean shout out to them man for not you know taking it further than it needed to go but it was that was a wild moment i forgot about that honestly they're gonna have to do something at the oscars this year with chris rock right like he they have to it's gonna be a disappointment if i watch the oscars and nobody gets slapped <laughs> i feel like that really set the standard he should walk up there with like a bodyguard or like mike tyson and just be like i brought some muscle this time yeah yeah, that'd be that'd good. Be funny, uh, but yeah, they're, the Oscars are putting a plan in place, a security detail to prevent any future slappings. I say, I say, let the boys slap each other. They're, Is that for comedic effect, or are they serious with this? I think they're being serious. Like they've That's established silly. new security. There's, That's silly, it's man. just funny. It's funny to watch two guys in tuxedos fighting. Do you think they're gonna make, was... mention it? Like, do you think they're gonna make a joke about it? Whoever, I don't even know who's hosting it. A, th- a thousand percent. If they don't, they're they're, they're dropping the ball. Billy Crystal. Oh, love him. I Billy Crystal's slapped. hosting it? Nah, probably. That's just who they usually oh, no. go to. They got to bring back English guy, English office. Oh, Ricky Gervais? Ricky, Ricky Gervais. Gervais. Love that guy. You love Ricky? Yeah. Yeah, Ricky, uh, he's not as funny as he used to be. He rubs me the wrong way. He's, he, he does? I don't think he rubs me the wrong way. He's just not as funny as he used to His be. His monologues at those award shows were killer. Yeah, like I, I like it when the people get up there and they like they fucking roast people mm-hmm. and they bust their balls because a lot of people in Hollywood can't take that and they take everything very seriously and they'll do something stupid like react and slap you. Mm-hmm. But uh, we need <laughs> we, we do need to have just a, a, a person who can get up there to take all of Hollywood down a peg. Mm-hmm. Uh, Big T. How you doing? What are things like in Big T's life? Uh, I'm good. I did. I woke up this morning. I'll read you the text. I had a text uh, that I had received at 1 a.m. Uh, from one of the doormen in my building. Oh, it's, it sounds fancy. No, it's not. It said, hey, Connor, be extremely careful leaving your apartment. There's a full-grown rat in the staircase. Um, so I dealt with that this morning. <laughs> <laughs> saw it saw it as i was leaving the building full grown yeah it was it was not small um that was the only uh only real thing that's happened to me since we last spoke why didn't they get rid of the rat i think they were trying to uh i don't know exactly how was it well, alive but... oh yeah oh so it wasn't a dead rat it was a live run no around. a dead rat would be very easy to get rid of oh damn i would think an alive rat in a staircase would be easy to get rid of too you just open the door at the bottom of the staircase i'm assuming there was more than one yeah that's why you need the second amendment <laughs> you go go down there and start blasting <laughs> just went down there start blasting take that motherfucker out uh rats are very smart so maybe the rat was outsmarting your doorman. I, I think know. there was there was some sort of tunnel it had created to get from the basement of the building like into the main area. So yeah. I'm assuming it was going back and forth between there. Once rats start freaking out, that's always a good sign to, to get out of wherever you're at. I mean, some bad shit's about to happen. Yeah. Uh, other than that, uh, nothing okay. going on. Really. All right. Well, good luck with the rat. Did yeah. you get a picture of it? No. Oh, you got to snap. Picture I took a it. picture of where it uh, scurried back into. Got it. It's got, got a nice little cavern. I got duped. I got duped by some propaganda. 
regarding rats. Yeah. I saw a video of a New York street vendor that was that was barbecuing rats on a kebab over a charcoal grill. And I thought it was real because I, I clicked on a link and then I read an article about the fact that there is like two street vendors that have been doing this where it's not legal, but they're selling rat meat. And apparently that was it was propaganda that I fell for. What kind of propaganda? It's illegal to sell rat meat. I'm, for sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. In retrospect, I should have known. Hand up. Also, I think it's guinea pig in Ecuador. Oh, really? Yeah, I think that's what... Yeah, it's guinea pig in Ecuador. I knew it was in New York because I, I looked at the surroundings, and as a New Yorker, I can kind of pin where everything is, I th which is a delicacy. Actually, is it Ecuador? No, it's Peru. Peru, the guinea pigs. That's where, uh, like, it, dating back to, like, the Aztecs and Mayans, they used to raise guinea pigs and eat them, and then they called them guinea pigs because the Spanish... Uh, you could buy them at the docks for a guinea. Oh, interesting. I thought and it was because they were from Papua New Guinea. No, they're from South America. They're like smaller capybaras. And I know, I know what a guinea pig is. Yeah, yeah, but like that's that's like capybaras are from South America. So just some, like that, you can see the etymology of the evolution there. Yeah. Um. For the record, I I would not eat a rat if it was if if it was barbecued up and presented to me on the street. Are they so marketing I felt it for as a rat? No, it, I, it was just, it was a fake thing. It was a fake thing from a different country. It was a video from a different country and it wasn't even rats and I fell for it and then I felt stupid because I should know better. Would you be mortified if someone fed you something that you didn't know what it was and after they said it was a rat? Yes. Really? And yeah. what if you thought it was good? Like that you're like, like, ooh, this is good. And then they're like, well, it's a rat. No, I'd know. I'd know. I could taste rat. <laughs> no, I've, I've eaten squirrel and rabbit and it's basically a chicken wing. And so a rat, I wouldn't imagine to be that much different than squirrel meat. Yeah. Uh, maybe actually a little less gamier if it's in an urban environment. Ew, Billy, you can smell them on the street. You think they're not going to taste weird? But hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble finding its I'll send you the legality. It's, it's, it's illegal to sell rat meat? I don't know. I don't know what the law That's, is. I, what I heard y'all just say. I would imagine if yeah, if you were frying up rats on the side of the street, <laughs> that's got to be against a but, dozen but health why? codes. But why? You know what? I think it's probably against uh, slaughterhouse code. Yeah, because oh, I don't know what's it. Because you can only kill certain animals. Like a lot of farmers have to send their animals away to be slaughtered. Yeah. Yes, it's it's probably a health code violation to just like yeah. trap a rat and then cook it and then sell it to somebody. It's probably one of those things that never was officially made illegal because everyone was like, we all went through the bubonic plague. Like that too. Like we. I don't know think I don't think it's illegal, man. I don't, I'm not I'm not seeing it. I think it's illegal to to find a rat, kill it, and then sell it because if you're going to be a, a food vendor, you have to work with the Department of Health, and I'm pretty sure some of that has to do with meat preparation mm -hmm. and. Uh, meat storage, and I'm guessing that you're not abiding by all those codes if you're killing free range rats. I think it's illegal to. Can you sell free range chickens? Chicken meat? Yeah. You can sell. Well, no, you probably can't catch a chicken on the street or a pigeon. Yeah, that'd be the same thing. You can't catch a pigeon and then sell that meat in a street cart. So I saw a video that was real of a guy throw out a huge net. He like threw out a bunch of, he, he th I thought he was feeding the birds in the beginning of the video. Then he went into the back of his van, grabbed a huge net, threw it over all the pigeons and then grabbed the bag and threw it in his, uh, in his van. And a lot of people thought that it was like, they're taking it to a, people were, the video was marketing it as he was taking it to the Chinese restaurant to put in the chicken. Like you don't know what's in your Kung Pao chicken. That's racist. I know it was racist. It was racist, but I then did the research. They were selling them to uh, shooting, uh, shooting preserves. The the place like where you can just like tower hunt where they throw tons of pigeons yeah. out the tower and they're just blasting them. Mm -hmm. So, but like that's a, that that's like the fake news part that if you look deeper, like, yes, he was illegally catch. Actually, I don't know if it's illegal to catch pigeons. That's probably another loophole. You can catch him. Can you catch him? You can catch anything. Yeah. Mike Tyson, huge pigeon guy. Yeah. Huge. Have, have any of you seen the old movie on the waterfront? I have not seen that, but I did see Ghost Dog, The Way of the Samurai, and Forrest Whitaker was a big pigeon guy. I, I'm kind of thinking about getting into pigeons now. You should get into pigeons. I like they're pretty easy to keep. Like 
especially in an urban environment, just like have like a little box with a couple pigeons and then like give them to people so they can send them me homing pigeon messages. Yeah. There was a, uh, a guy that I knew growing up. He served in World War II and his job was to train yeah. pigeons. He was a uh, pigeoneer. Like yeah, care, like and guess and the Nazis trained eagles to catch yeah. the pigeons. I'm actually unlocking a History Channel documentary that I saw when I was like eight in my brain. Like the Nazis used to train eagles to catch pigeons, oh, especially on the coast of Normandy that were going back to England because like when paratroopers would get dropped behind every energy uh, enemy lines, they had like a pigeon with them. And then they like like spies would send coordinates. Yeah, and that was always really fascinating to me. Yeah, the student that was his job was he was a pigeon keeper, and so he would send messages back and forth with the pigeons. And he just for the rest of his life he owned pigeons. He would take them out and just fly them around every afternoon, give them some exercise. But yeah, that was a job, and he would tell me that uh, the Nazis would would hunt his pigeons, like falconers. Yeah, I, I don't think they were eagles. I think, or they may have been. But they, they got falconers. Some like, sort of bird of prey would attack his pigeons. Did they make an animated movie about this? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, about the Nazis capturing pigeons? I don't. I haven't seen it. I'm pr- <laughs> There's like a wait, possible. Pigeon it's possible for sure. Movie. Uh, Valiant, 2005 film. It's about the birds, the war pigeons during World War II. I saw this in theaters when I was six. It's an animated film about war pigeons. Yes. I do recall that movie now. I oh, did not Valiant. know it, it had Nazi uh, tie-ins. You, well, I don't think they put it in the movie, but they were avoiding like evil falcons. They were fighting an yeah. unnamed war. Peregrine falcons. Jesus, with a big... Wow. That's... Holy shit. Yeah, I've never seen this movie. All right, we might have to watch it. I... I, I Remember watching it, don't remember the plot, but that was... Set in May of the year 1944, it tells the story of a group of war pigeons during World War II. Yeah. Okay. I'm in. <laughs> oh, I still got to see Cocaine Bear. Yeah, you do. Fuck. Um, anyone want to go after this or I'll just go alone? Ricky Gervais is in the War Pigeon movie. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. Imagine That's if it. I just subliminally, like, why do I like Ricky Gervais? It was like was war, war, war Pigeon, pigeon movie, movie 2005, but I was six years old. Oh, crazy. Hugh Laurie's in there. The guy from House. John Cleese. A lot of Brits. How about that? All right, so check out Valiant. I'm sure you can find it streaming online somewhere. There's a couple other stories I wanted to talk about quickly. Um, I was reading the other day about the JFK assassination in my spare time. And the guy that the doctor that they sent in to uh, talk to Jack Ruby before he stood trial and before he like went insane because he was diagnosed as being insane, and paranoid, schizophrenic uh, towards the end of his life. The doctor that they sent him in to talk to him. Turns out he was a CIA doctor that worked on the MK Ultra project. Manchurian of, candidate. Of mind control. This dude whose job it was. One, he was a specialist, I think, in the Korean War. He was a specialist who was able to extract false confessions from people. So that's how he got famous. And then the CIA hired him and then put him in the MK Ultra experiment, conducting these experiments of mind control. I think he might be the guy that, that poisoned the elephant to death on LSD. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. But um, that's the dude that talked to Jack Ruby, the guy that shot Lee Harvey Oswald. And that's the guy that... He was the last doctor to speak with him before Jack Ruby went yeah. insane. I'm absolutely convinced that the CIA knows how to make people go insane and also like manipulate them to become assassins. Like for example, RFK's assassination. I was reading about this. Uh, uh, Sir, Sirhan Sir, Sirhan 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 was a terrible shot. And he might have never even hit RFK. And they think the security guard behind RFK. Actually, I think they pretty sure, pretty much can prove it because of all of Sir Han's bullets. Like hit, there were six bullets in the chamber, eight bullets. All of them missed. But he was a diversion for the security guard behind him from the hotel to shoot RFK. And I, RFK Jr. went on, uh, and he's like, uh, he has a condition, um, so it's hard for him to tell the story. But he's just like 100% RFK was killed by this security guard behind me. Yeah, I, I don't think that it's been proven. I'm going to put an asterisk on Billy when he said it's been proven. I think it, I think it's been proven that there was eight bullets that did not hit RFK and there's only eight bullets in Sirhan Sirhan's gun. So which bullets hit RFK? Yeah. 
I have heard that there are more bullets fired than his gun could have contained. So I, if like they shot up Saran Saran with some sort of like hallucinogen that they've crafted up, but like a like an LSD and then just like because he says he doesn't remember it. Saran Saran says, I have no recollection. Of yeah, this. that's what that's what Jack Ruby said when yeah. he was uh, when they jumped on him on the ground after he shot Lee Harvey Oswald. He, his reaction was, what's going on? Why are you guys on top of me? What just happened? Have any of you ever fainted? Yes. Or like gotten uh, knocked out? Yes. There used to be this thing yeah, in I high mean, school where you would like go into like a fetal position and it would knock you out. Kids oh, love yeah. to do that. Wait, what? Which made no oh, sense. Oh, go up against the wall. Yeah. Go, like start hyperventilating and try to stand up. Yeah. People would do that all the time. And I'd be like, what are you doing? Like at recess. Brain the teachers cells. would like freak out. Yeah. If you like compress somebody's chest. Yeah. I've never seen that one. Laugh. You can make you somebody imagine, pass up by laughing. You imagine just being a teacher, just going about your day. And then, like, there's this new fad in the school that everybody's trying to pass out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do remember. I remember something about, like, you would do, you would breathe in and make yourself hyperventilate. And then somebody would compress your chest. Sounds pretty dangerous. There was also one where if you, like, blow on your thumb as hard as you can, you can pass out that way. Kids did that for, like, a week. Yeah, being a teacher sucks. Those are the kids that just started doing <laughs> whippets. Wild. Yeah. Like, for some reason, they wanted to pass out and like huff whipped cream. Wait, Mad Dog, when did you pass out? Um, I was 10 and I was up, like sitting up on my bathroom sink. And then I got down and I hit the middle of my spine on my doorknob. And something about like hitting my spine. I got the black dots and then I fainted. And my parents found me on the floor. Oh my God. That, <laughs> I, I don't know if that's fainting. <laughs> I actually what had else would that be? a very similar story. I, really? Yeah, I was like playing around. It was at school. I was like playing around in the library and like I ran and jumped onto like a bean bag. But right behind the bean bag was like a hard edge of a, a bench. And that bench hit me right like in the Like, like in the small, middle of the yeah. spine. Yeah, it's not the middle, but like right to the side of it. And I just like was like, oh, the, I, I got I literally like blacked out. And I woke up and everyone was standing around me like, what the hell just happened? Yeah. I got in a car accident an hour later, too. Whoa. Bad day. Yeah. So yeah, that's how I passed out. I mean, that's fainting, isn't it? Yeah. Imagine waking up from that and it was just like, you just shot the president. I mean, not the president. You just shot You just (laughs) shot the guy who shot the president. I'd be like, sweet. (laughs) Vengeance, bitch. Uh, There's another story that I read regarding a president in the news. Um this was on, I think I saw this on Today I Learned. Sometimes I just go to Today I Learned on Reddit and uh, just like learn new facts. Did you know that Richard Nixon wanted to be a rapper? What? That yeah. would have been no. trash. <laughs> he said <laughs> Wait, He said in an interview uh, with Washington Post back in 19, uh, I think it was like the late 80s. He said, I have often thought that if there had been a good rap group around in the in those days, I might have chosen a career in music instead of politics. <laughs> hey, there was many great rap groups around in the late 80s. <laughs> what are you talking about? He was trash. I would love to hear it. You think he has unreleased tapes? Song. Yeah, his unreleased tapes, he drops the N bomb a ton. <laughs> See that <laughs> is that real? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The Nixon tapes from the White House. He recorded everything because he's paranoid. Oh, I, th- I thought Aaron was just saying, like, that he that it would be trash. I didn't know there was actually. I am, I am also saying that, yes. Oh, wow. Like he, He's bad. the one that started the war on drugs. How good could his rap lyrics have been? True. His tapes, he dropped, like, every slur imaginable under the sun. Did he? No, not, like, rap tapes, Avery. I think, are you thinking that he actually made the songs? Yes. No. No, 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 no. He he just re- has recordings of him being a dick and racist. Oh, uh, that's and, bad. And he used to booze his face off. Oh, yeah. He was always drunk. So so Nixon actually ordered nuclear yeah. war to start several times over the course of his presidency. And there was like a rule that was in place, an unspoken rule, which was just wait till the next morning because he's blackout <laughs> drunk right now and ask him if he still wants to launch a nuclear weapon. So by the letter of the law, I think we had talked about this um, when Trump was in office where like some generals were saying that there was something in place where if he wanted to launch something, they would have like a back channel discussion. 
Um, but Nixon actually did try to start a nuclear war yeah. on multiple occasions. And I guess it's against the Constitution what they did, right? They were like, well, he's he's clearly drunk, so we have to disobey his order. Well, I think at the same time, like imagine like, you know, you're telling your buddy who got drunk at the bar and try to fight some dude for like some stupid reason. And you just wake him up the next morning like, yo, dude, why did you get into it with that guy last night? He's like, oh, shit. Like, I can't drink tequila. Yeah. And then it's like, you wake Nixon up. Nixon, you tried to fucking bomb China last night. <laughs> yeah. I got I got blackout drunk. And and order the deaths of a hundred million people. <laughs> <laughs> you almost, you almost did nuclear holocaust last night. Yeah, he's like, oh, he's not like, again. Oh, shit, not again. No, not, not again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking next weekend off. That would man, I, it's crazy to think that that's like that actually happened. That, but, that could be a thing. Like, there's no safeguards in place. Like, they just have to did that. Like deny his orders there's no safeguards like yo, you probably shouldn't have the reins dog like yeah i should not be in charge man if you're president should should you be allowed to drink yeah uh, you need some to blow off some steam yeah you need to blow off yeah some. yeah but okay you're not allowed to have three beers and drive a car but you can have three beers and order cruise missiles to be launched halfway around the world i mean not on the job i think you're always should. on I the think, job it's always I think if the you, job yeah, I think you should, if you have if you have to make a big decision, you should not be able to drink. And if you and if you are and if you have been drinking and have to make a big decision, it should go to second in command. You think Absolutely. a president's ever gotten called into the Situation Room just hammered? Oh yeah, oh Probably. yeah, yeah. That. especially back Probably. in the day, they were always hammered. Probably JFK. Yeah, I was gonna say sixties. JFK yeah. for sure. I think they need like an hour in their week where they can just go ham, but then that's it. Well, they probably. I mean, that's the day if they if they get if they get faded. <laughs> it's just the day. The day's off. Yep. It, it, I mean, but they take a lot of days off. They be golfing like a motherfucker, dog. Yeah, every president has to golf. What if there was a pre like okay, Biden golfed, Trump golfed, Obama golfed, W golfed. Not watch his draft. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. Time video. Clinton did Clinton golf? Clinton, yep, for sure. I think Clinton would just say that he was exercising so that he could get out of the house. No, didn't they actually? Am I crazy? But didn't they like something about a cart girl and Clinton wasn't allowed to golf? Uh, I don't know about that. I mean, it, w it wouldn't shock me. Yeah. I do know that when he was governor. Like literally Hillary didn't like him out on the course. Yeah. W when he was governor of Arkansas, uh, he used to say that he was going out for a jog and he would sometimes just have his personal driver drop him off at a girl's house. Here's a picture from 2008 of Bill Clinton, Trump, and Rudy Giuliani all playing golf together. Oh, that's right. Yeah. At Trump's course. It's a big club and you ain't in it. By the way, Mer George, George Carlin, rest in peace. Yep. Go. Reading up on how some of these Southern law families operate under the Murtaugh's makes me absolutely think that Clinton killed count is a thing. Okay. Like, it convinced me. Go on. Like the fact that it exists, like the type of cover ups and stuff exist in small counties. Like, uh, like, because it turns out the Murtaugh family isn't the only, like, depending on how your district is set up and depending on the state, like, these people can have so much power and influence. And it, the Murtaugh's weren't the only family in that area. At the, in another district, there's like another family, which. I, I got the inside scoop from a local. He's like, there's like three of those families up and down the coast of South Carolina that just run that shit. You just run shit. But it's like a fiefdom. Think about, uh, yeah, I always say that they're like warlords. They, yeah. they control everything. And if you're a kid growing up in that environment, like that's got to be, you have a get out of jail free card because your dad is the one that's in charge of selecting who to prosecute. Yeah. Well, yeah, we just, we'll see that here. Yeah. Um, also, we're going to have to get into this eventually. Might as well do it now because uh, Billy just said Murtaugh like nine times in a row. There's there's like a million different ways that I've heard this family's name pronounced. And it's not just the last name. It's also like... Alec. El there's Alec. For, so his name is Alex Murtaugh. He's the guy that is currently on trial for double murder for killing uh, one of his children and his wife, allegedly. And his name is Alex Murdaugh. And I've heard his name pronounced any combination of like Alec. He says Alec. Alec. Alex. Murda. Murdaugh. Murtaugh. And there's probably a couple others. He says Alec Murdoch. Uh, Murdoch. Yeah. yeah. Alec Murdoch. I th 
that, yeah, I think that has to do with accents. I think it's accents. Accents, right? pronunciation, and then like old South accents. Yeah. Like, like old, old South. Yeah. They are very much like you, you feel like you're in the year 1850 when you hear them talk. That family, a hundred, well, a hundred percent definitely were in the KKK. Okay, like, we, the, the, like just so you know, when you knock on wood during I a meant podcast, to say allegedly. that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't qualify legally as allegedly. Yeah, just like like a hundred percent that type of power, like definitely like could have, totally imagine those are the type of people to do that type of thing. Yeah, allegedly, allegedly knock on wood. Uh, yeah, do you guys want to just get into the Murdoch shit? Well, there's there's one other story um, that I saw I yesterday. Looking, hold on, I was looking. I was looking at. Uh, just to backtrack for a second, uh, I was looking at which presidents like played the most golf. If you had to guess which president played the most golf, who would it be? Trump. 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 You play everybody, a lot of golf. Everybody, 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 everybody shooting Trump. Uh, I'm gonna say. I feel like that's the obvious answer. There's got to be somebody else. Eisenhower. I bet you Eisenhower's nasty. Woodrow Wilson played the most golf. Huh. Yeah, they said he played over. A thousand rounds. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! Damn, good for good for him. Also, yeah. Woodrow Wilson, when he died, or before he died, he had a stroke, and I think it was like a full year of his presidency. They just kept it from everybody, and his wife was in charge of making all the decisions, and she just wouldn't tell people that he was like basically unconscious for the last year of his presidency. Whoa. Damn. Yeah, kind of crazy. Um, Woodrow Wilson. Interesting. I wouldn't. Stri- he wouldn't strike me as a golf guy. They said he had a great swing. That's what the article said. Yeah, if I was, that's really the one perk of being president is you can. It, since you are working all the time, you might as well be working on the golf course. I pull up. I pull up to the dopest. Yeah, you know, I would go to Augusta. I would go to like Pebble Beach. I would go to the 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 dopest golf courses. Do you in th- the world. Do you think that you get a special golf cart, like Air- the Air Force One of golf carts? Of course. Of course. And I would trick it out. I'd be like, yo, the president wants to bring his own golf cart. And they're like, what are you going to say? No. Yeah. You bring that sucker with you, put spinners on it, have a sound system. I don't know. I don't know if you want to dial it back to 2008, but. <laughs> are we not doing spinners anymore? Them shit's been out, man. <laughs> We call, we used to call them spree wells. <laughs> you remember the shoes? Spreewell, Latrell Spreewell had shoes that had spinners on them. Coley mm-hmm. used to wear them all the time. I, I they, were, they were Dada's, weren't they? Dada's? Was that the name of them? I think they were Dada's, yeah. G- I had spinners on my minivan when I was in high school and in college. That's wild, though. Please tell me you have a picture of this. I might. I'll have to track it down. They were hubcaps, so they weren't even like the real. <laughs> of, course, of course they were hubcaps. <laughs> it was like 30. It was, it's, yeah. It's just, it was just super expensive. Yeah. It was like $30 a piece at Walmart. <laughs> got spinners. And then uh, somebody stole my hubcaps one night. Do you think damn. Pre- yeah. Oh, damn. Do you think a president ever smoked weed in the White House or on the job? Yes. Yeah, for sure. Who do you In think? the White I don't know about in the White House, maybe. But uh, yes. Definitely. I, wow. JFK. President. I don't think JFK was a weed guy. JFK was a huge weed guy. He was used he? to go to like, yeah, there's this bar. In Martha's Vineyard, I want to say that Big Joe bought, and it was like a jazz bar. And I, like, I legend has it that all the Kennedy boys just just smoke weed in there and and party with the jazz players. Oh my gosh, said legend has it. Yeah, it's, I mean, <laughs> J- it's not confirmed. I just heard it from a dude from really old. I, dude. I've heard that. I've heard that in a long time. Legend has it. JFK did roll <laughs> with some like some pretty cool people back in the day. Someone definitely smoked weed in the White House when he was there. He had bad back pain. Yeah. He was definitely popping pills. JFK was a pill popper. He's a big pill guy. He's a big golfer, too. Uh, let's see. Bush, probably not because he was sober. Imagine if all he did was smoke weed. Like if he, he was, was California, California sober? sober. Yeah. I could see that. Um, Obama might have. Nah, I don't think so. Choom Gang? You don't remember the Choom Gang? No, no, what was that? In his memoir, he was talking about when he was in high school, he, he would have a group of friends that he would hang out with after school called the Choom Gang, and they would just sit and smoke weed. Oh, I don't doubt that he smoked weed. I doubt that he smoked weed as a president. I think I think his, his margin for error was so low, and he knew like the amount of pressure on him. I think he kept it pretty tight. I think he did before the Iran deal. 
Nixon wanted to cause nuclear war. He just wanted to make peace with Iran after smoking some weed. He got too high. He's like, Obama, you're trying to chill with love Iran everybody last night. He's like, what? Why can't we all get along? I think, uh, I think if I'm going to pick one drug that our president should be allowed to use, I think I got to go Coke. <laughs> I got to go Coke. Make you're you bugging. Make you more alert. <laughs> You don't go to sleep. You can come up with all sorts of great plans. That's probably what Bill Clinton did before the Trans-Pacific Partnership. He's like, what if we just had China make all of our goods? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just, listen, you, you get coked up. You have a million different ideas that you're never going to follow through on. But when you're president, you can actually make all of them happen. I think I think mushrooms. If we if we want that one drug, I'm, I'm picking mushrooms. That's not a bad one. Just have them be happy all the time. Happy. Just really vibing out, you know what I mean? Not non-violent. And you get super creative on mushrooms too. So that's probably what happened before the moon program got going. Bro, you are you have associated each drug with a X policy and I'm dying <laughs> right now. I'm 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 loving it. I'm I'm just trying to think like cause ever since like, you know, <laughs> drunk Nixon caused nuclear war. Like what drug, like, you know, the spiders, how they make their webs yeah. on different drugs. I'm just trying to do that with historical events. Meth. Uh, ooh. Uh, tr- Meth's a bad one. I think meth, maybe that's how they start building a nuclear bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or like some sort of terrible tragedy. Tragedy. Like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to destroy the world. Meth probably would have caused like. Meth would, meth would be an issue. Old, I would, old Hickory probably was doing meth and just made terrible decisions. We're probably going to get presidents soon. I mean, hopefully, uh, if we can get a president that's like under the age of 60 ever that are prescribed Adderall. Yeah. What about vaping presidents? Oh, I bet you Obama vaped. Yeah. I bet you because he was trying to quit. And so I know for a fact that Obama, he used to have like the, uh, the Nicorette gum. And so when you chew Nicorette, it comes in these little... Um, you know, you break off the tinfoil quarter. Like it's not just like a dentine ice where you pop it out, but you have to tear off like the entire square mm-hmm. and then you pop it out after that. And I heard that he was like just leaving those all over the White House when yeah. he was there. They would be in like every room. My, my oh, he smoked cigarettes? He used yeah. to, yeah. Oh, and, big time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's nasty though. Does he Ugh. smoke weed too or no? He did. He did. He he probably got back into weed. That's got to be a, a real nice thing. It's like, like from cigarettes to weed. Well, it's got to be a nice thing if you if you're done being president, then you can do all the shit that you made illegal. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe Obama's got like the key to the the DEA lockers where they get the real good shit that they would confiscate. Obama wrote in his book that he continued to smoke sometimes eight, nine, or ten cigarettes a day in the White House. That rocks. It is. It, does look cool. Mm-hmm. What Gives kind of that, that is? I agree. That that is one of the biggest problems I've ever seen. Is smoking is one of the worst things in the world. Uh, smoking cigarettes, but it looks cool as shit while they do it. Like that shit looks fire. It does so cool. It absolutely does. Um, all right, you guys. Anything else you want to you want to discuss real quick before we get into? The uh, the Murdoch murders. No. Oh, there there is a uh, <laughs> big team. <wants> to move <laughs> I want to so talk. Long. This is maybe the first, the uh, the most excited I've ever been to talk about something. I, I have one last last thing, and it the name is similar. Rupert Murdoch testified. His his testimony came out yesterday. The uh, the chairman of Fox News, or I guess the News Corp is what it's called, News Corp. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Fox News is getting sued, and they're actually in a lot of trouble for for the uh the 2020 election because uh dominion the voting machines the voting mm-hmm. machine company is suing them it's not like it's uh well they're being sued by dominion because they would have like sydney powell on all the time and they'd have rudy giuliani on and they would put forth the the idea that dominion was controlled somehow by the venezuelan government and venezuela used their machines to hack into america's election switch a bunch of votes and that's why Trump lost and, and why Biden won. So uh, it's it's a fine theory. It's entertaining. I, I think that at some point, if your guy loses, you need to have all sorts of excuses lined up for why they lost. You saw it with Hillary in 2016 when she lost to Donald Trump. 
a lot of people just couldn't believe that Hillary lost. And so they came up with theories of their own on, on why that happened. And this time, uh, Dominion actually has like a pretty good lawsuit because say what like regardless of whether or not it's true no one's going to be able to use dominion voting machines anymore because their name has been dragged through the mud and so what county or what uh what election officials are going to do business with dominion knowing that at the very least there will be people that will claim that your shit's rigged if you lose if they lose so they lost a shitload of money they were a pretty big business and um they're suing fox news because they're saying that they can prove that Fox News's personalities like Hannity, Tucker Carlson, um, who else am I? I'm leaving a couple people out, I think. There are a few other people that are named. Uh, Laura Ingram. They're saying that they all knew that the story was bullshit and made up, but they continued to put it out there uh, because of ratings and because their audience wanted to hear about that exact sort of thing. And uh, Rupert Murdoch admitted yesterday that like they should not have done or the, the transcription came out that Rupert Murdoch knew that they should not have done what they ended up doing. I don't know if I conjugated those verbs correctly. Basically, <laughs> he's saying uh, they they were aware that it was not an accurate story and they should have done more to stop putting it out there, which seems to be like that's a pretty big uh, statement to make when you're when you're under a lawsuit for slander or libel, because the, the bar is very high to prove that like you knew that something was false and you still did it anyways. But there are text messages back and forth between like Tucker and Laura Ingram saying like, we got to stop having Sydney on. She's crazy. We got to stop having Rudy on. She's crazy. And they're misleading our viewers. And then they continue to have them on. So there's there's actually mm. like a it's probably not going to happen, but there is a possibility that News Corp could get sued and lose so badly that they just cease to exist in their current form anymore. Oh, that would just be so the opposite of what everybody would think it was. Be. Like it's like to their constituents, it would just be like, see, they're trying to side into them once again. It's just, I don't even think that's a solution, but I do hope they reap what they sow because um, they, they, they have been sued before or something like that. And they claimed, I forget what, what the lawsuit was about, but in their, it was Hannity specifically, and he they had to admit that it is not like real journalism and it's not news, it's in, it's entertainment. And they had to admit that um, in order to save face in court. Um, they, they've, they've been sued a couple of times for those for those uh, reasons. But yeah, I, that, that would be wild. I think it was Hannity and maybe Tucker Carlson that said, we're not we're not journalists, we're not a news show. It's just it's entertainment, entertainment. for people. And yeah. That's not against the law to like have a, an opinion show and to spout out, you know, whatever theories you think at the time. But it is against the law or it's against the law to uh, do it knowingly spreading false information um, while saying something different behind the scenes and causing damage to a company that can be proven in court. And I think with Dominion, they can prove that they lost a shitload of business because of that. So like it's one thing if Rachel Maddow gets on the news and you remember that when Rachel said that she got like Trump's tax returns and then she ended up doing like 30 minutes about like his yacht was parked next to the yacht of some like Russian oligarch for a couple of weeks. <laughs> that might be the worst broadcast of anything like of all time, because it took 45 minutes to even get. We yeah. have it coming up after this commercial break. We yeah. have it. We're going to unveil it. And they did that for four breaks. Then they finally come back and show it. And she was like, so he paid a lot of taxes. Um, and this is how much it was. Yeah. And then, but don't forget his boat, Big T. His boat was near a, a bad guy's boat for like a week. Yeah. It was, it was, I, I'm ashamed to have watched it. Yeah. Uh, but so there's a reason why you can, you can do that. But if, unless somebody can prove that they've been materially harmed by it, which is also very tough to do, then you can't really face any consequences in the lawsuit. But it sounds like, I don't know, I'm not a lawyer. I should just say that, that you know, I'm obviously not a lawyer, but, uh, it seems like they could be in for a big payday. Dominion mm. could be in for a big payday at this point. Um, so that's that's talking Murdochs. And now talking Murdaws. Woohoo! The Murdaw murders, the Murtaw murders. So um, the Mur Murdaw family first came to my attention about a year ago, I'd say, a year and a half ago, when um, when the uh, the guy Alec Murdoch got shot. 
he was shot uh, on the side of the road changing a tire. And um, it, it made the national news because it was tied into a whole bunch of other stuff that this family has done behind the scenes. And it is really like a soap opera. It's an American Southern soap opera uh, from the low country of South Carolina. Great food down in the low country, I must say. I mean, you couldn't write this script. Like it would read as like a Yellowstone type. They should make once it's all said and done. They should make a drama series. Oh, they're making they're making movies right now about it. Yeah. Pro- who should play the Murdoch family? Ooh. Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill's uh, what's his name? The main dude. Oh, Alec? Paul. 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 Jonah Hill's the, gotta be the Paul, shitty kid. Bro. Jonah Hill's a little old for Paul Murdoch though. No, you're talking about Alec, the guy who's on trial right now, the dad. No, you think young. Oh. Uh, yeah, I was thinking young Jonah Hill. I ain't gonna yeah. lie. It's been, it's been a while since I've seen him. He's Super aged, bad. Like, <laughs> no, he's yeah? he's older now. Damn. Oh. I think um That's what I was up. Uh, when I first saw Paul, I was like, I was like a little Jonah Hill. You remember that that old show on Nickelodeon, The Adventures of Pete and Pete? Mm-hmm. Both those guys could get a gig. <laughs> I don't know which one would play which. Uh, but they're definitely making they're making movies. There'll be there'll be like way too much Murdoch content within a year and a half. We're yeah. going to be sick of this family because they're going to do like seven different miniseries. There's going to be many documentaries. There's going to be at least at least two movies that come out about David Caruso should probably get involved in it somehow. Seth Green mm. could be in it. Uh, Danny Bonaducci. He should be in it. That guy, Damien uh, from Billions. He played Bobby Axelrod. Oh, hmm. yeah. He's going to be involved. Just any you line up anybody with red hair in Hollywood and you have them audition and uh, and I'm sure that they'll end up getting the part but it does Billy it does seem like a made for Hollywood type script yeah so uh, it's it's a family that goes back generations and generations in South Carolina Hampton County they actually they run is it the 14th district 14th district the 14th yep. district of South Carolina uh, going back to like the 1900s uh they've been uh, the solicitors mm-hmm. which is that's what they that's the term that they use in south carolina for like the district attorney so um the patriarch of the family was a solicitor for that district which means that he gets to choose who to prosecute with crimes and uh, basically runs law enforcement basically i mean the establishment of this lawyer family starting all the way back in 1910, they had three solicitors in a row. And the first person to of that family not to get solicitorship was Alec Murdoch. Mm-hmm. So in that part, that's where the sort of fucking up starts. I have an amazing tie line, timeline I found on the Post and Courier, um, which sort of outlines all the series of events. Okay. Um, I picked the important ones. But yeah, 1910, Randolph Murdoch founds a law firm. He graduated from uh, South Carolina, uh, uh, University of South Carolina Law School, and successively every one of his male heirs went to South Carolina Law School. Also, but, great hats. Great hats yeah. if you go to USC, just walking around wearing, you remember those hats that have like the two lines on the front? You yeah. just say Cox. Cox. The game That's who makes those hats. Is that it? Mm-hmm. We should bring that style back. We had. I think I have one. We had one at Miami, Ohio, that was. It said Mofo because it was M of O. And that was a. That was a good one. I, I feel like a lot of universities made most of their money just on those hats. South Carolina definitely made a shitload of money on the Cox hats. Uh, probably still do. There was a university in New Hampshire, I th- called the Woodpeckers, and it just said Peckers, on the hat. I had one of those. I thought it was the the, the height of comedy when I was like. 14 years old, I wore it everywhere. I think Furman <laughs> has shirts that just say F U. Mm-hmm. I like that. Also in South Carolina. I like that. Uh, there's USC, the ones that just say Trojans on them. That's kind of funny. Oh, there's a St. Francis University, I'm pretty sure, that sells Shut the Fuck Up. That's STFU. Mm. Okay. I think it's St. Francis. I don't, I'm not entirely sure. Those hats were awesome. The Cox hats. Great hats. Yeah. Anyways, back to your story, Billy. Uh, so Randolph Murdoch is the first of the law dynasty, but he himself came from money from a phosphate mining family, which stretches back even more. If you're a family that's in charge of a mine, your job is just basically like 
make money and kill people and figure out how to not pay the people that you kill. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like yeah. if you're if you're in the mineral rights business. I mean, it's pretty wild. And then he himself wasn't a saint by any means, Randolph Murdaugh. Apparently, uh in the Varnville history book Railroads and Sawmills, uh he basically witnessed a man fall off the train tracks and get his uh get mangled between two tracks and then took the guy he might have even pushed him they're saying and then basically promised him to get him a huge check from the railroad company because he hated that the railroad was going through his land so they might have like tried an insurance scheme to got that went really wrong to sue the railroad companies and get the track away from the residential areas so like all this stuff like that it's, is that's better call Saul type stuff. Yeah. But like back in the 1900s. Yeah. So Randolph Murdoch. So this is the first Randolph Murdoch uh, was elected solicitor after starting his law firm in 1910. And then in 1920, he becomes the solicitor. Now, this is a big deal because this isn't a, a position taken lightly. It turns out there's a bunch of families like the Murdoch's across these districts that have as much power as they do. And probably there are similar stories of cover-ups that we have no idea about. Do you think that that families growing up in the mid 20th century, they're, it, they're like, okay, we're Murdoch County. You think they rooted for the Murdoch's like they were like a, a local sports team or a mascot? It's like, we're Murdoch people. Well, I think anytime there was a problem, they'd go to the Murdoch's. It, it's basically, from what I've been reading, it's like Southern organized crime. Yeah. like. We talk about organized crime through power, like the mafia now, you could say, has integrated into, you know, state politics and low level politics. Like this is how, like, you know, corruption and everything was done in the South. Mm -hmm. Like you don't hear about much like every like group of people has an organized crime, like syndicate kind of like the Yakuza. Like there's always some like the Irish mob, the the ginger mafia. mafia. Yeah. These guys are basically like good old boy, like group incorporated like, yeah i i mean uh, to a certain extent i i have to imagine that being a family of all gingers it's hard for them to seize power in south carolina right hmm. they're oh, strikingly th- ginger also they are they're they're the bad gingers they're <laughs> they're real real redheads capital r red they do look uh they all as, as strikingly ginger as they are they are equally as strikingly southern though like you look at them and you're like that dude is from South Carolina. Yeah, I think they were they were born in a uh, like a, a seersucker. Yeah, they were put into a seersucker swaddle. Peter Millar, Southern Marsh. Yeah, mm-hmm. and this Vineyard has, vines it has nothing to do with them being uh, redheads. But you look at the pictures of like everybody in this family as their kids, and you're just like that piece of shit. You're just like, I know that I know that guy is just a mean asshole. I have a feeling that the I was looking around to about the phosphate miner owner who's the original lawyer's father and all that. I have a feeling that it was the South. I don't think their labor was getting wages per se. Probably not. Like allegedly. Like think like the whole history just stops at nineteen ten. And looking back and they say that their family was there for generations and generations. I think there's a lot that's been scrubbed out and probably crazier stories than this about cover ups and just saying Southern wealthy family owns a industry that needs a lot of labor. Mm -hmm. Probably they did it how it was back then. Like knock on wood, Billy. Yeah, yeah, allegedly. But who knows? Um, So he gets elected to the solicitorship of 14 judicial court. This covers low country counties of Allendale, Beaufort, Colton, Hampton, and Jasper. Uh, That is important later in the story. So the OG Randolph Murdoch dies in 1940. Uh, he, He dies very mysteriously. So he may have faked his own death or committed suicide, depending on who you talk to. He dies after his car is struck by a Charleston and Western Carolina Rail Company freight train near Varnville. He had been returning from visiting a friend in the country when at 12.30 a.m. the crash occurred. He had been running unopposed for a sixth term of solicitor at the time. So the uh, from what I picked up, the conductor of the train said that he couldn't see, it was dark out, but as soon as he saw uh, Randolph Murdaugh, Rudolph was outside of the car, waved at him, got back in the car, and then it was he was the car was hit, and then the body was in a million pieces, and they couldn't uh, identify it. 
Yeah, so not an accident, it doesn't sound like. Not an accident. Because it's got to be tough to get hit by a train by accident. Or you could put someone else's body and just watch it get exploded by a train. Like, have you ever seen cattle after they get hit by the cow catcher? I have not, but I, I can imagine. So, you know. And there wasn't DNA testing back then. Right, and there wasn't pretty good autopsy or dental records probably. So there, there's rumors, allegedly, that he may have faked his own death. So that starts there. The whole faking death scenario yeah. starts there. I, I always wonder about faking your own death because it has to happen, right? People have to get away with it. Yeah. We hear about the people that get caught. It's like bank robbers, but I'm sure that some people have faked their own death and gotten away with it and will never be the wiser. So that- I've actually never thought about that. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, it's it's got to be tough to do now, like really tough. Really, the you gotta old, move countries. You gotta move countries. Yeah, if you if you're trying to fake your own death, I think the best way, go out on your boat, out into the ocean, and then just sink your boat somehow, and figure out a way to get to shore somewhere else. Have your papers all in order, ready to go. Oh, you know who they just found out faked his death? Who? Uh, Carol Baskin's husband who died in oh, yeah. Tiger King. Wait, what? They yeah. found he's what? alive. Yes. He's alive. Yes. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, he's alive. That I, shit threw me. You I lie. thought that was a rumor. I don't uh -oh. think that's been confirmed. Has that been confirmed? True. Mad Dog saw it too. I did you see it too. You guys probably saw it on the same place. We have similar sources. Uh, <laughs> I, I, don't, Baskin, I, I saw it on husband. Twitter. Carol I could okay. be wrong. I don't think Killer that was confirmed husband. to be true. Billy, you're going to have to back Carol, this up. I know. Carol Baskin, husband found. Real Don quick. Lewis. The greatest presidential ad. Dead of husband. All time family of Carol Baskin. Yeah. Family of Carol Baskin's dead husband breaks silence. Says dead husband was found alive, but no one noticed. Earlier this week, Baskin resurfaced footage from November 21 interview with Britain's the, This Morning talk went showing the animals' right activists saying that Lewis had been found alive. So she said that he was found alive. At this stage, the case concerning his disappearance remains unsolved. That's from January 30th. She slipped up and said that he'd been found al alive, but she probably wants to act like he's dead because like, she's probably like, fuck that guy, he ran off. So um, not confirmed. Not no. confirmed, but the rumors out there that she's saying, but if she had killed him, she's probably yeah, letting she, that rumor float so yes, people stop saying 100%, that she killed her I, That's the first thing I thought was like, well, America owes that simp an apology for for all. Well, I guess we don't owe him an apology. We owe her an apology because mm -hmm. we thought that she killed her simp. Uh, his children said, quote, it's simply not true uh, that he was found alive. Damn. Oh, okay. Damn. What, what a roller coaster that Damn, was. I, I, was I thought well, that was a bombshell. Oh, I was sorry. Tiger King. Tiger King. I, was Tiger King the first pandemic? bonding that everybody had I, th I think that was like the big first bonding during the pandemic yeah because it, it just game? happened to come out like that first week yeah, yeah. but it, yeah did y'all like that show like if you watched it at any other time would you have enjoyed it i think i, I think it was really bad i think i would have been like this is a, a medium interesting documentary that I came hated out it. i i was fascinated by it yeah but we didn't have anything else and aaron yeah. so yeah. so when we interviewed uh scott from hq trivia we were talking about the uh the timing of, of when they were popular and how how massive HQ would have been if it had come out uh, like during the pandemic when we had nothing mm. else. Like we would have looked forward so hard to those 15 minutes of trivia every single day. And Thanks. he said that they actually went out of business two weeks before the lockdown started, which is Damn. such bad timing. That's pretty bad. All right. So this guy is still dead. Yes. What if, you know what I thought about the other day, actually? What if Prince was still alive? I could see like Prince. He faked, like he faked his death. I could see if anybody did it. I could see Prince faking his own death. I would. I would be mad at that. Actually. Okay. Would you be mad if he was like, "Hey, I'm Prince. I'm still alive, but I've spent the last seven years just creating music nonstop. Here's twenty albums." Nope. Then I'm happy as shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> that would be lit. I, that's would absolutely be lit. That's exactly what I was. I was thinking. I was like, Prince was a weird guy. He there were certain aspects of being a celebrity that he did not like. He enjoyed making music. He was dedicated to that. But what if he just what if he just laid low the last 20 years and just came out with bangers? If ever, if ever anybody was going to do this and come out and do it, it would a thousand percent be Kanye. This is yeah. the Kanye move if I've ever seen one, dog. Yeah. Did you guys, 
Yeah, wait, maybe Kanye might be in MK Ultra too. Did you guys see the Carlos Boozer Prince story? So Carlos Boozer bought like an $8 million house in California when he was playing, I think when he was on the Utah Jazz. And uh, some, his agent called him and was like, someone's willing to pay a million dollars to stay in your house because he didn't stay in it. And he's like, all right, fine. And uh, one day he goes back to the house and all the stuff that he originally had there was gone and he typed in the gay code or whatever and it was Prince staying at his house and he changed everything and he was really pissed and he called Prince and he's like, what's like the deal with this? Like what's going on? He's like, rest assured, like when you come back, everything will be back. So he put all of Carlos Boozer's stuff in storage and made the house like the way he wanted to and Prince sent him $500,000 to ease his mind about it. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's so wild. Isn't that that's, crazy? That's fuck you money for real. <laughs> yeah. Man. That is crazy. The pin code was 1999. Yeah, yeah good one, Billy. <laughs> Nailed, Nailed it. it. Nailed it. <laughs> just, just, just humor me, though. Like, what if Prince is still alive? Just think about it, everybody out there. What if Michael Jackson's still alive? And he's innocent. Nah, he's definitely innocent. But if he's alive, I'd be Mike Jack, bro. Big fan. Well, if you're out there, come back to us, man. It, come on, macrodosing. If, if, but they, I, I saw the I saw the autopsy report. That was also part of uh, the research. The autopsy report uh, revealed a lot, so he's he's probably dead. If, if Michael Jackson was still alive and came back, that would be or got discovered that he was alive. That would be a pretty significant uh, tally in the he's guilty category. Would would you not say? No. All right. Agree. Why would you? I mean, why would you? Why would you say that? Well, because he's he's run away from something. What did you run away from? Right, tired of being famous, man. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You might be the most famous human of all time, mm. of all time. Jesus, boom. He was more allegedly, you know. I mean, no, Jesus existed. He's top three. There, there, there may have been a guy. It's, 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 it's spotty, is what I'm saying. I spotty. I can say with with high count. I think Jesus existed. And it's spotty. Big T, you just got back from taking a piss. Uh, <laughs> question, who do you think is the most famous person to ever live? For sure, Jesus. Yeah, it's Jesus. Yeah, well. I mean, who would be close? He's, saying Michael, he's in Michael Jackson. Oh, Muhammad, interesting. I think Muhammad might win. Think of how many people who existed before 1970 who couldn't have known who Michael Jackson was. So it's not close. The, the 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 content is not um the contention is not if collectively Jesus would absolutely wash Michael Jackson. The contention is did Jesus actually exist? That is kind of still on the fence. I, I'm with you. I'll give it to you maybe, but it's still it's not a hundred percent, right? So Michael Jackson was absolutely here. I think Jesus yep. clears. I think it's Jesus. Muhammad might be up there, though, because there are a lot of Muslim people. I don't know if they passed Christianity yet because South America is still huge, but like the Muslim world is like exploding at a large rate. Like 30, 33% or something like that, right? 33%. Yeah. Like Indonesia. The largest Muslim country in the world is Indonesia. And that's just like something that you just don't have in your brain until like to realize the magnitude. Yeah. Like in Indonesia is huge. Yep. All right, so so Buster, yep, the first Buster, the first Buster wins his father's seat. It was Buster's real name? Richard. Twenty four percent. This was twenty four percent of the world is Muslim. Huh. So this is Randolph Randolph Buster Murdoch. How do you get the nickname Buster? He's a Buster. Yeah, be a Buster. So Buster beats his father. He gets his father's old seat, and the first thing he does is file a wrongful death suit. Wait, wait, wait. Back up for one second. Did you say that he beat his dad? He he won his dead father's old seat. Because his dad got hit by a train. Yes. And this is in 1940. He, he beat his opponent by more than 6,000 votes. Okay. So he then filed a wrongful death suit uh, against the rail company involved in his father's crash, claiming negligence and seeking $100,000. So this was the same move that the OG Murdaugh did by suing the rail company. Uh, it would be the first of several suits the firm would file against railroads over its history. So that's Buster. Now, so I, I I'm doing a little bit of research on Buster, the nickname, and uh, a lot of people are saying that 
there's a patient zero for Buster, and that was Buster Keaton, the movie star. Oh. Because he was a silent movie star, probably one of the most famous people in the world when he was alive. And then if you if there was like a, a kid that you had that was funny, that was like falling down or smashing stuff, you would give that person the nickname Buster. Fun fact. So Buster was then indicted in 1956. So Buster was, Murdoch is indicted by federal grand jury as part of an alleged whiskey conspiracy involving nearly a dozen people. He's accused of conspiring with a bootlegger to move an illegal still from Hampton to Colton County to avoid detection by law enforcement officers. He soon resigns from office while awaiting trial on the charge. So he was doing some better call stall stuff, just with way more power. Moving, moving moonshine around? Yeah. You got to be really committed to the moonshine game if you're still running shine you know, post prohibition. Yeah. Huh. So he was then acquitted though. A federal judge labels him grossly unethical. Buster Murdoch is acquitted in connection yeah, with the for everything. whiskey conspiracy while 17 others, including former sheriff Jay Haskell Thomas are convicted. So I always have had the utmost confidence in the jury system of our state. And I've never had any fear as the outcome of the indictment presented against me. Buster said, announcing his plans to return to his old office. If reelected, he is then reelected in 1956. So he, uh, he's later rebuked by the Supreme court. So he did some crazy stuff and they've, and they've written this down about like the stuff he used to do in court. So he got a several high profile cases, including several that carried the death penalty. He's rebuked repeatedly by the South Carolina Supreme Court for the over the top arguments he employs. In one rape case, for example, he warns jurors that if they acquit the defendant, he will drop the charges against other accused rapists. That doesn't sound legal. He's like, well, if you're going to let this one free, I'm going to let all of them free. <laughs> like that, that was his argument. Uh, yeah, um, sounds like this guy was corrupt as fuck. <laughs> and now I, I read that he got, I think he sent 14 people to death row. Yeah. That's a lot of people for, I, I mean, South Carolina is not like, it's not the sticks. It's not like there's tons of people living there either, though. Per capita. So like 14 people in this conglomerate of what, four counties that he represents. Yeah. That's a lot of people to send to death row. Yeah. In, uh, in another case from 1979, he laid on the floor and had a witness wrap a garden hose around his neck to demonstrate how a victim was killed. He then continued his questioning with the hose still around his neck. So he was kinky. Yeah, this guy likes playing God. Like just he, extra. He's just extra. Letting people live and die. So Buster Murdaugh retires in 1986. Buster Murdaugh announces he will retire on December 31st from the post he has held for 48 years. He said he retired because he's tired. I'm tired, he says. Anyone that's been in office for this long, it, as I have, has paid homage to their society. So then this is where Randolph Murdoch the let third. Him go, let him go. <laughs> what did I say? Hom homage? Homage. 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 There, that's that's debatable. It's not. Homage. I don't think homage. Uh, homage. Or I, I have heard homage too, but I think homage. It's not homage. You said that. that's what you said. No, you said homage. Oh, homage. So this is where. So this is now where his grandfather comes in, Randolph Murdoch the third. Which, if you remember from the documentary, Murdoch. Let's go. Mur yeah, Murdoch. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> What's up, Murdoch? That'd be is, a strong nickname. <laughs> yeah, it would. What's it? We got the Murdoch in the house. Yeah, this is the guy that Paul, <laughs> the kid who fucked everything up and ran the boat off. This was the guy who he would call all the time. So this is third generation lawyer. Yep. The grandfather of the son. So Randolph the third had been the first four letter athlete in the history of Wade Hampton High School when he received the mark in 1957, but he had no secret of where his future lay. I'd like to follow in my father's footsteps and work towards a law degree. So he went to USC law school. So this guy then was elected as the 14th circuit solicitor. So there's three solicitors in a row. 1987, he's elected. Uh, first Buster dies in 88. Uh, this is then in 1994 when Alex Murdoch graduates law school. So this is Alec Murdoch who's in prison currently. 
He graduates law school in 94. Do you think that when these families are deciding, like, who's going to date my son, who's going to marry my son, they take into account, like, the other family, like, the 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 girl's family, and be like, we want you to marry into a good family, like, it's old school Europe, and you're trying to consolidate power? Yeah, probably other... Well, think about all these families that live in these different districts who have just as much power. They definitely all meet at the University of South Carolina Law School and end up marrying each other. Yeah. That's probably how it happens. There should be a dating app just for people that are from good families. Yeah. That Strong families. Hold all that power. <laughs> That'll go over so well. <laughs> so this is when Randolph Murdoch III steps down as a solicitor, fulfilling a pledge he made the previous year to return to practice at the family law firm. He departures, ends the family's nearly 87-year reign over the solicitor's office. Officials say the run is the longest by, a fa by one family in U.S. history. Um, Governor Mark Sanford selects assistant solicitor Duffy Stone to take over as a chief prosecutor. So this is huge because Alec Murdaugh never gets the solicitorship. Yeah. Um, and he's the first one in a, you know, long line. Was there not? Did he have any brothers that were named Randolph? He had older brothers. Uh, I think one was called Randolph. Yeah. And that Randolph that's and the John guy. Marvin. That's the guy that's the real disappointment. The one that's named yeah. Randolph that doesn't end up taking that over because you essentially crown your baby at birth like you're going to run these four counties when you get older if you name him him Randolph. Mm, I think basically I think uh, Alec was the only one to make lawyer. Okay. Maybe. Don't quote me on that. So then this is when a big jump from 2006 to 2015 Stephen Smith is found dead. Mm -hmm. Stephen Smith, 19, is found dead on the side of the road in the middle of Sandy Run Road near Joe Millie Road in the Hampton. Authorities initially believed he had been shot in the head, but an autopsy determines he died from blunt force trauma, likely from a hit and run collision. Highway Patrol investigators disagree with that conclusion, noting the absence of skid marks, vehicle debris, and other factors. Investigators chase numerous tips in the investigation, including some involving the murder, the members of the Murdoch family. And he had his shoes on at the time and they were yeah. loose fitting shoes. So they should have flown off. And they were off. saying that when you get hit by a car going at a rate of speed that could kill you, which could be as low as like 25, 30 miles an hour, that could still very easily kill you. Uh, if you're wearing loose fitting shoes, those typically fly off. So Stephen Smith was allegedly may have having some sort of relationship with Buster Murdoch, the first son of Alec Murdoch. That was what a lot of the uh, rumor and gossip was. Turns out he helped tutor Buster Murdaugh. So this is the first of many murders that the Murdaugh's, the modern day Murdaugh's have been accused to be involved in. So the speculation there is he was having a homosexual relationship with one of Alec Murdaugh's kids. And then that the kid was either going to tell somebody or they found out something happened. And the speculation is that uh, he killed him and left him on yeah. the side of the road. Mm -hmm. And there's speculation that Paul Murdaugh was also in the car for the suspected killing. Yeah. And, and all the speculation is like just the rumor mill right. just around town. A lot of people have talked to the press about it. And ever since it happened, have always said, like, we heard that this guy was involved. I don't think that there's any like forensic evidence that right. definitively links him to it or else I think that would be something to look into. But the, it probably was wiped away. Yeah. By Al So the Murdoch family had connections everywhere. Police, police chiefs, other lawyers, prosecutors, and all, you know, the highway patrol everywhere. So if they were showing up to a scene of a crime, they wanted to ensure that, you know, they could call the right people to make the right things go away. Mm hmm um, that's probably why there was a lot of debate on whether Stephen Smith may have been shot in the head. Was he hit by a car or was he beaten with a baseball bat? Um, the second death, February 26, 2018, was the death of Gloria Satterfield. Gloria Satterfield was considered uh, a second mother to the Murdoch kids, especially Paul, the youngest mm -hmm. one. Yep. She was a housekeeper and nanny and 57 years old. They um, definitely called her Miss Gloria, right? Yeah. Yeah. So 
apparently allegedly she had a trip and fall accident at the family's home uh they claim that the dogs tripped her over the coroner and ems have no record of the accident or her passing when the coroner eventually finds a death certificate it states that satterfield had died of natural causes yeah and a slip and fall is not a natural cause as far as i know right nope, right. it isn't if you're writing it up you write it up as an accident and that would require an autopsy and head trauma hmm. which like, Gloria satterfield trauma, yeah. did not have an autopsy also, she was alive when she arrived, arrived at the hospital. Yep, she didn't die on contact. And then was visited subsequently by Alec Murdaugh while she was in the hospital. Okay. I, I almost said something that would have made somebody very angry at me, so I didn't say it. For the record. If you had to say it. No, I'm not going to say it. Somebody I mean, on the show? You have to say Who it. would it have made mad? I don't want to say who it would have made mad. Interesting. Now you got to say it. Yeah. Now you have gotta to say it. it. Gotta it. say it. You think they Big T, you could play Alec Murdo in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> because listen, hear me out. <laughs> hear me out. You're, I mean, you're not even you're not even making sense. You're you're not <laughs> you're not even <laughs> making sense. You're not it's there. you're not ginger, but you could be Hollywood ginger. So it's like it, you've got the hint. <laughs> He's of redhead. He's white, what, 60? Ginger. Well, he's like 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, he's a big guy. He's a big guy. That's what I'm getting at. 60 yeah. years old. Yeah, I mean, we can do prosthetics, that sort of thing. We can make you look old. No, oh, you're a clown, dude. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'd see this is why I, I didn't mean, want to say it. He doesn't, he doesn't even... Uh, there's no remote resemblance. In the Hollywood adaptation, I don't think I mean, you... I don't think you... I wouldn't see the two of you next to each other and be like, damn, you're a ringer for that guy. But I'm saying you you ha you have enough of the traits where as a handsome actor that you are, you would be able to play the part. Well, you have enough of the traits of a dumbass to play one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're in that. Uh, Big T, that's my life. Uh, <laughs> yes. You have some correct. Andy Griffith description that they give Alec Murdoch. Andy Griffith was a uh, yeah. handsome man. That's how they described him. I don't think looking like him is necessarily a, actually when not young him, not when he, this guy Alec Murdoch gets on the pills because you can tell he's on the pills. Yeah, he looks constipated as fuck all the time. With um, with Andy Griffith, you guys watch the Andy Griffith show? Yep, I've TV seen Land, it. Mayberry yeah, RFD, that and Mash. Yeah, Aaron, you ever watch Andy Griffith? Uh, I know the whistle. Yeah, it's a great. That was good, bro. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Walking down the dirt road with their fishing gear. Fishing poles. Yeah. yeah. Guns OP. Too. Yeah. Man, Andy Griffith's show was, was great. That was a good time. A little, they had a little, a little TV run. They had that. They had, um, uh, shit. Who was the John with Ricky? What the fuck was that? Uh, I love Lucy. I love oh, Lucy. Yeah. They had, uh, what's the John with the dolphin? Flipper. Yep, Flipper. They had um, the the Munsters. You remember Mr. Ed? Mr. Ed. Mr. Ed. Yeah, Mr. Ed. They had a nice little run in that little era. It was all right, man. Do you know what crazy? The Munsters was only on air for nine months. Really? Or was, was that the really? Adams Family? I, One I thought the Munsters had a little run. I used to watch late night. used to watch the Munsters all the time, man. Uh, Avery. Avery's cracking up. You have to, you have to share with the class why. <laughs> I just saw... I just saw a tweet. It was like Patrick Ewing and he was like, enjoyed visiting Mrs. K's third grade class. And this picture is so absurd, like how tall he is compared to the kids. I'll send it in the it. camera. He's, oh, a big, yeah. he's a big man. <laughs> send, it, send it to the group. He's definitely seven foot. So. <laughs> oh, he can't tell. It's not loaded. Oh, yeah. I wonder why he. I wonder why he visited us like random as shit to like Patrick Ewing visiting a third grade, <laughs> yeah. class, like a random third grade class. That's part of why it's so funny. You can't, he had to be. He had to be hitting a teacher or something. Was, so <laughs> <laughs> you can't fire a man when he's talking to a group of elementary schoolers. <laughs> Somebody comes in, whispers into his ear, "Sir, sir, you've been fired," and he puts down my pet goat. I can't believe he still has a job. <laughs> Yeah, I he mean, won't in like a week. But. He definitely won't in like a week. Now, Jay Williams said that since many people have asked, people him, have been asking. He would he would accept the job of Georgetown University head coach. Thank you, Jay Williams, for that. 
because people had, had been inquiring if he if he wanted it. Everybody. Aaron, do you remember when um, when Ime Udoka got the job uh, coaching the Boston Celtics and Jay Williams tweeted about it? I do not. What, uh, what happened? He said, congratulations to Ime. Like, what a great guy. And also the more. The first black coach. Yeah. And more importantly, the first black coach in the history of the Boston Celtics were breaking barriers. Just conveniently forgetting the fact, well, Doc Rivers just won <laughs> a championship with him. Also, Bill Russell coach for the Celtics. I think there may have been another African-American head coach that they've had over the years as well. They've just had several like prolific, very, very, very famous head coaches. So when Jay Williams tweeted that out, my initial reaction was uh, congratulations, Jay Williams, the first African-American head coach at Georgetown University. Um, <laughs> they should. Did you? You tweeted that? No, I think I, I might have said it on on part of my take. But it, don't get me wrong; it was not an original take. I think like half the internet had mm. that had that same thought cross their heads. But yeah, Patrick Ewing probably, probably, definitely going to get fired. What if Georgetown wins the Big East tournament though? I would, I would not count on that happening. They did win one Big East game this year. They beat. Did they beat Butler? They might have. It had been like a year and a half know. since they'd won a game. Horrible. Very bad. Tough to see. Sorry, that was a, a very Oosh. long side conversation there. They beat DePaul and Butler. Oh, good for them. Yeah, two. Moving on up. So this is where- how, real quick, real quick. I want to know because I have I haven't watched a college basketball game this year. How's North Carolina doing? Because that was always my team growing up. Not good. They're gonna get in the tournament by the skin of their teeth. But kind of a disappointment from where they were at last year. They were preseason gotcha. number one and had I think they were the quickest preseason number one to ever fall out of the top twenty five. If if I was to ever have like a bucket list thing to do it would to go to be to go to a North Carolina Tar Hill game. Go to the Dean Dome? Never 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 been, but I always wanted to go. Yeah. I I would actually like to go there. I remember one time I was I was growing up and uh, I was visiting my grandparents in North Carolina and I was they were really into ACC basketball and uh and UNC they like both UNC and Duke which is really really strange I never really when I when I started talking to my friends about that about how my family likes both teams they were like what the hell is wrong with you and your family <laughs> and I thought it was totally normal and now I see that it was it was weird as shit that they liked those teams and NC State and Wake Forest they liked all of North Carolina but I remember I was visiting my grandparents and Duke was playing at UNC that night and i was like can we we should go to the game and they're like okay uh call up the ticket office and see if they have any tickets left and they were like we haven't had tickets for that game in two years <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it, it, wild. it would be awesome to go to uh to a game in chapel hill though i hear it's a great college yeah. town yeah I, don't, I wouldn't know i took a i took a visit there uh for my one of my colleges going coming out yeah because the colors yeah, that yeah, I loved them, and that was I. I liked I liked UNC basketball so much that I took a visit for my recruiting visit for football. Was that <laughs> I knew I wasn't going to go there? <laughs> was that Butch Davis? I believe so. Maybe it was years ago, bro. Two thousand three or four. Did he tell you like, hey, great part about coming to school here, you don't have to go to class? <laughs> no. <laughs> The paper class. I had a homie who went there. Uh, what's his name? Um, TJ Yates. TJ Yates went there. We we talked about because all that shit came out while we was in the league, and he was like, "Yeah, we had we had those classes." <laughs> Their head coach was John Bunting. John Bunting. And yes, that's Butch who it Davis was. wasn't until two thousand seven. That's right, John Bunting. Damn, I remember that. All right, Billy. So no, fire away, dog. So that just dog. Her. No, that just takes us to the <laughs> modern day situation. A lot of the stuff that was left out of the documentary, that like this was happening. I guess they couldn't like prove it because a lot of it was hearsay. And some of these stories were DM'd to me um, from residents of the 14th district of rumors they've heard about like the family's whole history. I think one of the sketchiest things was that that there was a freaking airplane. Uh, landing strip on the Murdaugh property. Yeah. Like th that's talk, going back to Carol Baskins. Like, were they like moving cocaine? Were like drug dealers landing? There's no real good reason to have a private landing strip. Yeah. You can go to a private airport, get on a private plane, but like to have a landing strip on your property, I can't think of why you would need that. 
Well, in the documentary, they said that it was just used for drugs and strippers. Oh, two good They're reasons. flying yeah. in strippers? And I think... In drugs? I feel like strippers might be the wrong... That'd be... <laughs> I mean, a waste of money to fly in strippers. Hey, I know these girls. <laughs> I found, check this out, guys. I found some girls <laughs> and they're, they're going to take their clothes off. The thing is they live in, they live in Houston. So, uh, so well, I got the plane going to pick them up. Well, if your drug guy can be like, Hey, I, I can bring some strippers with me. Yeah. Hey, I'm two for one nah, feed nah, two bro. birds with one scone as you're supposed nah. to say now if you, you, know if you have a if you <laughs> wait, have wait, a private <laughs> wait what uh you're not allowed to say kill two birds with one stone now you say feed two birds with one scone <laughs> who says that we can't <laughs> uh university professors okay oh, we can't kill birds feed two birds with one scone mm -hmm. <laughs> i like this is that. the america you're cultivating <laughs> I, I, <laughs> so you're aware I mean, that's who doesn't love scones. Scones, very underrated food, by the way. If they're done right. Yeah, scones are are delicious. There's a, a scone place in Seattle. Let me put you on the scone place. Uh, it's downtown. Oh, be sure to check that out. Yeah, dive <laughs> Next into. Next time it. I'm across the country. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Mister Mister Moneybags over here going to the Pacific time zone. <laughs> yeah, you take a day trip. Go get your scones. <laughs> it's a breakfast trip, okay? I is it just a is it is it just a biscuit like a like a like a biscuit? It's like a really moist, delicious biscuit. Yeah, very okay. buttery, uh, and you can you can get toppings spread on them, and they turn into like a whole a scone. What's it's better? Sweet. What's better, a scone from your fancy scone place or a bowberry biscuit? That's that's a good question. They're they're good in different ways. It's like asking me to choose between kids. Well, That's easy. I mean, people have favorite kids for sure. They yeah. won't tell you, but everybody has a favorite kid, bro. I, I like the scones because I don't get the scones as much as I get the Bowberry Biscuit. That's it's, fair. It's like a special treat, but they're, yeah, a good breakfast scone. Mm. You know what? I blew it. It's not a scone place. Fuck scones. I'm out on scones. Scones are always dry. It's a crumpet place. My bad. Crumpets. Oh, Google crumpet. They sound. They're the most bougie sounding food in the world. Yep. But they're ba they're not that much different than uh, the best breakfast biscuit you've ever had in your life. Fuck scones. For the record, fuck scones. They're too dry. Better than uh, your favorite place, Monell's. I did put some people onto Monell's last week. Okay, so biscuits are crumpets. unbelievable. Yeah. Crumpets look like like uh, soft English muffins. Yeah, so so soft, so buttery, so good. Anyways, get. I've some... never had a crumpet or a scone. Am I am I fucking up? You're not fucking up with the scones. Scones are trash. Scones are bottom tier breakfast carbohydrate. But how did you just how did you just pivot on scones like that? You just was referring us to a whole fucking one in Seattle, and now now you out on scones. How did this happen? Because I I was mistaken. It's a crumpet place. I just remembered it was a crumpet place in Seattle. Not a scone mm. place. I got crumpets and scones confused. This place is called the Crumpet Shop in Seattle, Pike Place Market. It's in the name, dude. That's embarrassing. Well, they serve crumpets. What about macaroons? No, I'm saying mm. the Ma name of the place good. is the Crumpet Shop, and you thought they sold scones. I'm sorry. I mixed up cr crumpets and scones. They're both. Yeah, it's a pretty big fuck up, though. It is. Oh, my favorite yeah. scone place, the Crumpet Shop. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how you had the voting liberal. That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. <laughs> Wait, explain that, Billy. You get too many mix-ups, too much information gets mixed up, and then you're just voting liberal. Yeah, tomato. Sure. If you had a tomato there, somebody just throw it right in his fucking face. That was bad. Actually, I, I, I'll admit, like, it really, really enjoying crumpets is probably the most liberal thing that I do. <laughs> that be I, up there. That I did, I did do the uh, Hamilton Peloton class one time. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's pretty liberal. Love Hamilton. Yeah, but yeah. You, would you ever do a, a Peloton bike class featuring the soundtrack to the musical well, Hamilton? I'm, I'm not rich enough to buy a $8,000 bike that doesn't move, but <laughs> I do. I, I, lo I enjoy Hamilton. All right. So <laughs> update the record. Hamilton Peloton class one, crumpet shop two. Uh, we'll keep a running track on the most liberal things that I enjoy. So yeah. Okay. So that sets up the infamous boat crash. Yeah. The, the what now? Infamous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The infamous boat crash. Yeah. You said, oh, he said infamous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what, what happened during the 
infamous boat crash. Uh, <laughs> on the way to a clan, uh, oyster fry Whoa. up. On the way. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> on the way home. Right, but it's a setup. He took the so Paul, the second son, Paul Murdaugh, got all of his friends went to buy alcohol at a convenience store using his older brother's ID. Mm -hmm. Bought some white claws, bush light, natty light, and natty light. And then I think there's also a Bud Light Lime in there. And hopped in the boat and with his buddies because he knew for some reason that there was cops out on the roads making drunk driving traffic stops. Yeah. They all go to the clam bake on the way back. Not a good idea to ever give an 18 year old a boat. While yeah. he's drunk. Yeah, just in general, like an 18 year old yeah, should yeah. not have a boat. I also, agree. how do you not, if you're his friends and you have an 130 pound, like, raging drunk kid do you not tell him to fuck off no do you, did you remember in the documentary that they were like we told him not to drive we told him we, he we didn't want to get in the boat with him and he was like extremely loud and aggressive towards us and we yeah. were like okay oh i they were think like that part kids they didn't nah, think man hey 18 18 is old enough to be like fam don't drive. what are you doing you faded like I, i've had that happen plenty of times like that's the one part where i was like i didn't really feel bad for buddy that lost his girlfriend was like he almost made it seem like he made him get in the boat like nobody made you get in the boat like and out and you, like when you see it which is eerie the um the security cam footage of them walking on the dock yeah like he's he's sloppy he's like super sloppy and yeah. like they still and they laughing and joking and walking to the boat so nobody was like i don't know i've had i've had friends like i've wrestled keys from before like give me the yeah. keys bro like what are you doing like i've had that happen before but it's, I, I don't know it's sad that, that she had to go but yeah. that shit they made that decision it's a bad one also did you like something that was really weird did you see that thing they talked about where his hands started tensing up when he was hammered yeah that was that's got to be like some sort of like no i missed it what did it say it's like every time say? he'd start drinking uh paul murdoch would just like start seizing up yeah and his like hands he, would get super he'd start like making hand like i've seen people do that before that's something that needs to be studied yeah uh they called him Never timmy yeah that they was called it, him timmy that was his drunk alter ego that was his drunk I'm, yeah does that come from south park i've heard people say that i don't know if that's true but i have heard <laughs> i've heard that i forgot yeah. about that dude because <laughs> he starts seizing up and he looks like uh, anyway turns out paul was a infamous drunk and like drank a lot and apparently it, like his family brought him up that way there was alcohol all the time and definitely probably a generational thing of they said that they used to they used to buy him handles of booze when he was like 16 which again that's another just bad mistake to make with a teenager. Don't give him a boat and don't give him hard liquor. Also, he had a bunch of hog hunting dogs, tons of four wheelers, tons of guns. Mm -hmm. Like that facility was stocked. Yeah, I mean, all the cool shit. He had an awesome life if you're like over 25 and you can handle all that stuff. That's like most people's dreams to get like sick ass property, nice boat, unlimited booze hog hunting dogs so you can hunt hogs on your property he was definitely the type of guy where a lot of people were friends with him and put up with his stuff because he just had awesome shit yeah yeah and his dad could get you out of everything yeah or his grandfather could yeah that was so weird like he call his grandfather like why wouldn't he call well his grandfather was more powerful than his father yeah i guess and even paul knew that that yeah. had to weigh on Alec. Yeah. The, the the crazier part that I that I thought about was like, yo, the, the conversation that needs to be had for you to feel comfortable enough to call your grandpa when you when you wreck a boat or, or you know what I'm saying? To get him out of anything, they'd be like, hey, if you ever get in any trouble, I need you know that we have like, you know, that conversation is a wild conversation to have with a child. Yeah. Your grandkid. Well yeah. It was probably a conversation that was passed down grandfather to grandson, you know. Uh, what's it called what was the position sent uh solicitor? solicitor to solicitor like three generations of solicitors they probably told each other like all that like the the Im amount of basically being above the law probably rotted their brains in their idea of right and wrong mm -hmm. because when you have a get out of jail free card i guess it just rots your whole 
you definitely take way more chances. Yeah. Um, but yeah, unfortunately. So before the before the clam bake or the clam fry, whatever they're calling it, uh, they were they were just doing they were just beer bonging beers to get ready for it. Six so, natty lights went down the beer bong. Yeah, that's a lot of that's a lot of pregame natties to take down in a beer bong for a hundred and thirty eight pound kid. Mm-hmm. Natty lights are trash. Sixteen. Yeah. Seventeen. Honestly, I don't know. Letting, I mean, I guess they wanted to go. There was, you know, I'm not going to judge. Like, I made stupid decisions. No, judge, judge away. It's but a kid, it's but a I don't murder understand. thing we're talking about. Yeah, judge if, that shit. Like, if this guy was that out of control and you, like, took, like, even if his dad was super powerful and he was like, I don't like this kid, like, whatever, like, you're, the father would appreciate taking away his keys. Yeah. Right? Um, or did you think the Murdaws are, like, like encourage drunk driving? Uh, they certainly don't discourage it. Yeah. I mean, the story of him flipping his truck and then like a bunch of them like getting mad at the girlfriend of Paul for calling 911 is ridiculous. Yeah. You exactly. don't, you know, they have their own private 911. Yeah. It's grandpa. Yeah. So they're, they're leaving the party. They're shit faced. They stop at a bar on the way back. Wild move. Yeah. Nobody else wants to stop at the bar, but Paul and Connor. Oh, mm-hmm. Connor did? Connor did too. Connor went into the bar too. What Connor kind of, is also, for people who didn't watch the documentary, Paul's best friend. What kind yeah. of bars are these where they're just taking like 18-year-old kids in that are, I think he his blood alcohol was at like a point two. two. Four. Yeah. I guess he was a murder. Yeah, yeah. It's like there are no rules. Yeah. Hmm. So they get into the boat. They're driving back. Paul suffers from uh, can't get no bitches itis, where he just starts <laughs> <laughs> starts freaking out at his ex girlfriend. Yeah, he like hit her and spat yeah, on her. Yeah, like, yeah he like, slapped, slapped her. Dude was acting totally out of control, incel vibes. Totally abusive. Yeah, terrible dude. That like literally like he I, I hate to speak ill of the dead, but he literally might be the worst dude ever. So they they were driving back and he was just doing like circles in the river. Yeah. Because he was blackout drunk. Yeah. And eventually they hit a uh, a bridge piling. Yeah. And so they all went into the water and his girlfriend was not, her body was not recovered. So they meet on shore and trying to figure out what to do. Um, Not exactly. His friend's girlfriend was not sorry, found. Sorry. Sorry. His friend's girlfriend. His girlfriend was found. She had a laceration in her hand. Yeah. She had a laceration of her hand. Um, there was two girls sitting on a cooler in the front of the boat. There was Connor and Paul right by the center console. And in the back of the boat was Tony and his girlfriend, Mallory, mm-hmm. who unfortunately they both got thrown the farthest because the boat flipped forward and they got catapulted into the water. And Mallory, they think hit her, they think Mallory hit her head. Uh, and got knocked out and then got taken away with the current. Yeah. So they, they meet up on shore. The authorities come and uh, drop the, the ball. The Murdaws get called and they show up at the scene with law enforcement. And basically, uh, was it was it uh, Randolph Murdaugh that was going around telling everybody, don't talk to the police? Yeah. Don't that was say at the anything. hospital. Yeah. Okay. So, so they're... No, the, that was Alex. Alec. Alec. A- Alex showed up with Randolph. Somebody showed both were. somebody showed up at the scene of the accident. Right? I no, think it was just the, the I think that was the the chief of police who they had in their pocket. I forget his buddy's yeah. name. And they and he started running around. They then tried to start pinning the driver as Connor mm-hmm. and caused confusion and have no that was at the hospital story. yeah yeah, yeah so, that, that was at the hospital when they started all right so, so they get taken to the hospital no one's identified anybody as the driver of the boat necessarily um and I think um who what's the name of the boyfriend Tony Tony Tony, Tony. was saying that uh that Paul was like smiling and laughing at the scene afterwards yeah. And he's like, hey, my girlfriend's missing what, and you killed her. Like, what, what's going on here? So they go to the hospital. Still didn't notify Mallory's family. I think Mallory's point. body, they found it at the scene and just tried to destroy it. I mean, not destroy it, but like keep it away and not found for a while. 
because then there would be no crime. You think the cops did yeah, that or the out, kids did so, that? Someone that they were connected to. So, like, let's say if you're one of the uncles, let's say you're the police chief. They because I was looking at it, it would it's kind of weird place for them to lo- lost the body because it's a little shallower because it's by the because where they hit was on the side, like the side of the bridge. Um, I don't know which pile on exactly, but that water looks pretty shallow, like shallow enough for why Tony went for the, uh, why he so easily went to the shore before checking his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cause if Wait, you're swimming, so you're saying they got flipped. The authorities come, let's say 20 minutes later and they come and find her body and keep it or put it down the line i don't know just because the body not being found for such a long time is just something weird but uh, they that's what happens say, when it's in the water and gets carried away yeah they said there was a strong current yeah but just i don't know maybe it was just because it was so close in the water with shallows like how billy's just asking questions i'm asking questions <laughs> like i've i've been in situations on like small sailboats uh where like someone gets hit with the buoy or two people get hit with the buoy and like the water's shallow and people are knocked out. Like I saw someone get hit with a buoy and knocked out and they like, it was very obvious when they were in the water and it was shallow water that like. Okay, but you know. was it at night? No, Good yeah, I'm just, it's just weird. There's something weird. Also, um, you said that the water looked shallow. Yeah, I what have that? no idea. Okay, all right, all right. Just I just don't understand how that Tony guy went to shore. That was the first thing he thought of. Yeah, it would only if it was right there that I to believe. save himself. Yeah, you're in the water. You probably go to shore. I'm not saying Billy's like, but how do you know you're, you're holding your girlfriend in a loving embrace, and then you get in the water, and you're not you're, gonna try to look for your you're girlfriend? not hugging right. in the they air. They were trying to not die. Yeah. I think I think instinct is to survive, hurt. and then once you realize, oh shit, where is everybody? Oh, you know, you kind of fend for yourself until you realize that people are missing. That actually makes it makes it makes a lot of sense, but. To say that the authorities came 20 minutes later and found the body and kept it, that's kind of wild. Well, you said some of the parents were even thinking like they didn't want to find the body because they didn't want there to be an actual murder. They were saying, yeah, they were they were saying that uh, not because um, they thought that they kept her, but that they were just uh, stringing it along. Yeah, like yeah, they weren't actually trying to find her. They were just stringing it along. So, so they go to the hospital, and then the Murdoch family shows up at the hospital, mm-hmm. and it's Alec Murdoch, yep. Paul's dad, mm-hmm. not a solicitor, yep. and then his grandfather shows up, mm-hmm. and they have a badge. Apparently, you get a badge if you're a solicitor. So uh, Randolph Murdoch was like he had his badge on his shirt. Which makes him look like he's law enforcement, but yeah. he really he really isn't law enforcement. And so they were letting him into every room, and he was coaching people up, saying like, "Don't talk to the police. Don't give a statement. You don't need to talk to them." Which is true that you don't have to say anything. But he was coaching them up uh, in the hospital, and as uh, some people were undergoing procedures, he, they were like, "Don't let this man into my room. He's not my lawyer." Yeah. Paul's was, girlfriend said that. Yeah, yeah. He was acting like he was everybody's lawyer. He, but he wasn't. He told nurses and doctors like i am now representing um these kids it was specifically paul's girlfriend and she was like do not let this man into my room he is not my like representation because she was shady on him while they were dating and she was obviously upset and her and paul were obviously not on good terms at this point i mean i felt like she probably so much shit she saw dating him i mean she only talked about like two events like him getting out of the overturned truck and like him watching his father detox off pills yeah there's probably so many more stories that she has yeah of that family and so the nurses they were like this guy sucks go tell his girlfriend that she needs to break up with him right now yeah because he was acting like such an asshole in the hospital to like the doctors nurses yeah. police you gotta be a dick for that to happen mm-hmm. you gotta be like a big ass horrible human yeah multiple people did that not it wasn't like one nurse he had a bad interaction with it was multiple people told her hey you need to break up with this guy uh so in the hospital he uh they eventually recover but there's still 
some confusion as to who was driving the boat at that point. They were trying to pin Alec Murdoch was going around trying to say that Connor was the one driving the boat and actually I think went up to Connor who was getting wheeled into a MRI or some sort of imaging machine and said, I know you drove. Don't say anything. Mm -hmm. We'll try to get you out of this. Yeah. What a piece of shit. Yeah. Bad, bad guy. Bad family. Bad hombres. Like, sorry he, he got killed. That sucks. But kind of a piece of shit. Yeah. And remember, Alec. Did he ever have a chance? A chance? What? To that, not be that's, a that's, um, yes, you, that's a good you question. can. I'm he was uh probably more likely to be a piece of shit than most people, but you could still not be one. You could still not. I think you yeah. were he was given all the all the equipment necessary. Yes. And training. But still put it all together. Yeah, he was highly trained. He was like the Navy SEAL of being a piece of shit. He probably yeah. <laughs> probably the only person who could have saved him is Miss Gloria. Yep. Yeah. The housekeeper who was who many said was his like real mother and he kept a picture of miss gloria in his wallet yeah because maggie very obviously favored buster yeah the older more successful son so i i do have to agree though that if your first call is first call is to like your grandfather and not your dad your dad probably is pissed off about that to a certain extent right yeah but don't you think that that was just kind of like the way that the relationship was with the grandfather because yeah. he was the solicitor yeah the patriarch like, do you think, do you think Alec was taking that personally, or do you think that was just like kind of the way the cookie crumbles? He might have took it personally. Well, think about how many times Alec probably called his father to get out of trouble. Yeah, if you grow up in your in your dad's shadow like that, that yeah. affects you in its own way. Yeah. All right, so they search for the body, eventually find it, and um, eventually uh, Paul is brought up on charges mm -hmm. of boating under the influence. That caused, um, caused a death. That caused a death. And so there are a few charges that he is he is uh, accused of. He gets out on bail. I think it was like, what, 50 grand, something like that. Mm -hmm. Gets out on 50 grand bail and then kind of just goes back to living his normal life and just partying, doing normal Paul Murdoch stuff. Apparently, he wasn't allowed to leave the 14th district. like, And he should have gotten a, uh, this is what I got from a DM from someone close to the case. He should have been issued a uh, ankle bracelet and not be allowed to leave the district. But he then went like literally overseas or like to Guatemala on a sh fishing trip huh. and left the district several times. He wasn't handcuffed either. They let him get apprehended without putting on handcuffs. And when they took his mug shot, he's wearing his like nice dress shirt, in it, which is not standard operating procedure. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately... I mean, Mallory Beach, then I think her family then later files a wrongful death suit um, against Alex Murdaugh and his other son, Buster, um, after they found the body. Mm -hmm. So that occurs right after. And then they try to prove in, in that that's when a lot of the uh, stuff that was overlooked in the hearing Mm -hmm. And the indictment of Paul Murdoch gets re-brought up, like a lot of the civil in the civil case, like where everyone was positioned on the boat, how it had to be Paul driving because Connor uh, like cracked his jaw on a side piece and it was the only possible way who could have been driving. So, mm -hmm. I mean, so, it's one of those things that like a lot more came out in the civil case as opposed to the criminal case. Yeah, so they they also filed a suit against the bars and the convenience store for serving the alcohol that night. And then, uh, so he was charged on April 18th, 2019. Time, Paul, time out. Time yeah. out time, time, time. I understand the bars, but maybe not the convenience store because didn't he give them a fake ID? He did. He gave them well. It's, it's real ID because it was his brother's. But well, yeah, yeah. Some, but it wasn't his. So that's how I mean, it's, hard, it's really hard to distinguish that. You know what I mean? Like, how could you fault? Yeah, that one's that one would probably be tougher to prove that they were negligent, unless they right. knew. There's a good possibility that they knew Paul. And yeah. That, yeah, unless that's the case. Yeah, and I think that's why Buster was also in the suit because he had his ID. Gave the ID. Yeah. Yeah. So he was indicted April 18, 2019. Two months later, less than two months later, Maggie, Paul's mom, and Paul were found dead. 
They got no, sh- 2021. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Two years later. Yeah, good, they- good point, Big T. Yeah. Messed up the timeline. Two years later. Now, mind you, he still has not gone to trial. Right. So two years, um, he's been just awaiting his trial date to be set. And he's, you know, very well connected. Now, his, his dad, Alec Murdoch, is not a solicitor, or he's not the solicitor, but he's still a high-powered lawyer that works for a very prestigious firm. He had an army of lawyers represent him, so Paul has not gone to trial yet. And then uh, two years later, June 7, 2021, Maggie Murdoch and Paul Murdoch were found dead on the family property. They were found dead, gunshot wounds by Alec Murdoch. Yeah, they were found in two separate places around the dog kennels. And what we now know, Alec Murdoch said that he was visiting his father and mother, his mother with dementia at the time. But a recent Snapchat uh, video came out showing that he was at this kennels with both Paul and Maggie when it happened. Something I just found out through an inside source, Maggie didn't live on the camp compound at the time. She was living in a separate residence. Um, apparently, Alec had called her and Paul. Paul was living at the residence to come over to go see the grandparents together because the grandmother did, was having memory problems. It was alleged like, oh, let's try to bring her with everybody because she's probably going to die soon. Now, I've, I've heard that um, that they were thinking about a divorce, that Maggie was yeah. considering divorcing Alec. And then friends of the family were like, no, they had the perfect marriage. Everything was wonderful. You don't always know that just by hanging out with somebody. You can't say like definitively, no, their marriage was great. Uh, but the fact that Billy says through, in, what would you, you say, sources close to the investigation? Yes. So a guy <laughs> on Twitter told Billy that uh, that Maggie had moved out. How yes. much vetting went into these sources? Uh, he's from the town and... I checked with his location on Twitter and okay. his from the town. profile picture was at uh, one of the beaches near the like you could tell he's a t- like from the place okay from the low country and they've probably been gossiping about it and know the facts way better than so your source mainstream is man media. from South Carolina mm-hmm. nope don't trust the mainstream media trust guy on the ground on Twitter in okay. South Carolina but you can fact check that that's probably right that there's a guy in South Carolina that DM'd you. No, that he he <laughs> he he gave me enough like knowing of the case. Like apparently this guy also gone to a boat crash with Paul, uh, with Paul Murdoch. Okay, he's got boots on the ground. All right, yeah, boots on the I, ground. this is my favorite type of information I get because I vetted this guy. He's like from there. He almost got into a boat crash with him. He'd been at a what, beach party. He almost or went, went he from, did? Because you they, said he got in a boat no, crash. Like, now he almost like, got in a boat crash. He clipped like sometimes not a boat crash. It was like, more of like a clip. Like have you ever had like seen? Like a boat fender bender? Yeah. Billy, like, okay. take us through your vetting process. Uh, I look at their profile. I try to see if there's any indication of where they live. The town they lived in is in the 14th district. Okay. And as far as this almost boat crash that he got into. Um, what kind of vetting went into that process? Uh, he was describing like a bunch of stories of like being at a beach party with the Murdoch okay, brothers. So, so, but the vetting that went into that was just, he told you that. Yeah. Okay. But he seemed no, very convincing and close to the case. He also, <laughs> uh, no, he also said that he, he gave enough explanation of people. I don't want to out him too much, but he gave enough explanation of who he was and someone who was in the show that he may have been. Related I to. believe you. I was just curious to your vetting yeah. process. Right. So like I connected the dots. Anyway, so it turns out like at beach parties, like cops would roll up to like the teenage beach parties. And then once they saw the Murdoch's were there, they just like leave. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, we're getting the fuck out of here. The boys Murdoch's will be boys. Here. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, they were, they were found dead on the property. Allegedly, they had been called over to go yeah. visit the, uh, the grandparents. So it was a setup in, in, under those pretenses. Paul was found with shotgun blast to the chest, multiple gunshot moves to the head afterwards. Maggie was found hit with a mad dog. You know the gun? Blackout 300. Exactly. Uh, like an AR-15 style rifle that she was found like running away, hit with an assault weapon. Mm-hmm. So they're trying to figure out who killed them right now. Alec Murdoch says that he showed up and they're all dead. But the Snapchat video that just came out shows that he was definitely in the vicinity. I don't. Th- I think there is either two shooters, and he was one of them, or two guys, and 
didn't because like think about it the shot like maybe he's using a two-shot shotgun and then switching to an ar-15 type weapon but i think alec murdo was there and definitely knew who did it and was when they got shot saw it all happen and maybe organized it but th- there is a possibility he didn't actually pull the trigger so so he said that he uh he found the bodies after coming back from his Mother. Parents yes. from from his visiting uh, his mother at the hospital. Visiting his mom at the hospital. Now I believe he has since said he lied about that. He has. Yes. So because the Snapchat video came out where you can clearly hear his voice in the background, he's got a very he's got an unmistakable voice. Right. Like old Southern voice. And why need to they, they presented that evidence and he admitted, Yeah, you got me. That is me on the video. I was there. So he changed his story. And now his story is that he was there on the property, he was with them down at the kennel, and then he walked back into the house to get ready to go visit his parents. And he um, sat down on the couch for a second, watched a little bit of TV, then got up, and then he discovered the bodies at that point. I think the uncles were involved because all the family's assets were transferred to Maggie's name. And that would have been reason to kill Maggie. And then uh, Maggie, the wife, and then Paul just was caused all the issues and a reason to just try to make another problem go away. So so after the discovery of the bodies, um, they start investigating it. And obviously they question Alec because he is, you know, he's close. He's the husband. He's the dad. You're always going to question that person. And then um, make sure I get my dates right here. Then June 22nd, 2021, which is less than a month after they after the shooting. They reopened the investigation on Stephen Smith's 2015 death. The first guy that we mentioned, the guy that was found in the road and the initial speculation was a hit and run. Um, So they reopened that investigation. That probably means that they had some reason to believe like through evidence that they collected that they might be tied somehow to that murder. Um, And then uh, they dropped all the charges against Paul Murdoch after he died. And then Alec Murdaugh's law firm started to investigate Alec Murdaugh himself. So the law firm was called PMPED, and that was the prestigious high-powered law firm that was in town there. And uh, the M in PMPED stood for Murdaugh because he was a he was a partner there. So they start investigating uh, the misuse of client funds at that point. It's September second. 2021 September 2nd they investigated him because he had allegedly taken a lot of settlement money from his clients and just stolen it just 100% stolen it so uh, this goes back to the Satterfield case so um, he had been representing the Satterfield family in some sort of a I don't know if it's a lawsuit trying to recoup money after the nanny had died and he kept telling them yeah, we're getting close. This type of case takes a while. Don't worry about it. He had actually won money from that judgment and then taken it all for himself as he was telling the family, we're still working on it. And he did this with numerous clients. I think maybe 10, 12 other settlements that he had just misinformed his clients about while just straight up taking their money. So apparently he sued his own homeowner's insurance to get money for uh uh, Miss Gloria Satterfield's mm-hmm. sons and was doing this with Paul in mind as Paul was so attached to her. And apparently, according to the girlfriend in the documentary, uh, Paul was like, my dad's going to do this valiant thing and sue the homeowners association of uh, the home uh, insurance. It was so an umbrella policy that he was getting money out of. I yeah. Think. I mean, what's crazy is that that type of suing for accidents that goes back like five generations of that family yeah like that was something like oh we're lawyers now we can just sue for random stuff and just get money yeah so that's september september 2nd 2021 that's when his law firm catches on to what's going on and they start an investigation into him stealing money he knows that he's he's been caught with all this shit and things about to crumble down on him two days later september 4th 2021 alec murdoch got shot on the side of the road he got shot in the head but he called the cops called 911 and was like hey i've just been shot i had a flat tire uh, or i had a a low pressure tire i was working on the side of the road a guy came up to help shot me in my head when i turned my back to him so uh he's taken the hospital 
he survives. And at that time, he also says that he's going to go to rehab and that he resigned from PMPED because he is admitting that he embezzled, that he uh, misappropriated all that money that was coming in. And what's crazy is he got shot in his head by a guy named Curtis Smith, right? Allegedly. Alleged. Is that still alleged? Yeah, because Curtis Smith has admitted to that. Curtis Smith said that if he had given me the gun to kill him, I would have been able to shoot him in the head. Like he would have actually killed him. Okay. So what, what ended up happening was um, Alec Murdoch had talked to Curtis Smith and asked him to kill him. He tried to he tried to hire a hitman to kill himself so that his his family could get ten million dollars in life insurance benefits that could go to his son. You his know what's surviving the, son. the stupidest thing is? It turns out his coverage suicide was covered. He mistakenly thought that if he'd killed himself that it wouldn't have been covered. Oh really? Yeah. Well maybe he was also just like fucked up maybe on drugs. <laughs> maybe he was fucked up on drugs and maybe he didn't like he didn't go through he was unable to go through it with it. So he's yeah. like it's easier if somebody else does it than if I do it to myself. Yeah. So he paid this guy to try to kill him or he paid this guy to kill him for whatever reason he ended up not dying so he's on the side of the road with a gunshot wound in his head because he hired the worst hitman of all time yeah <laughs> or maybe he's trying to fake his own death you think maybe like you know how suicide sometimes can run in the family what if faking your own death runs in their family <laughs> and murder and murder yeah murder so, murder so he's so he claims that he had a debilitating addiction to prescription pills, Oxycontin, Oxycodone, that he was taking, uh, what, like 12 pills at a time? You could see in his face that he's just so bloated. Like anyone who looks like that is popping pills. Like, and, and he's saying that that's why he embezzled all that money was to pay for his Oxycodone addiction. He did lose a lot of weight. He's like way, way skinnier. Yeah. I think that's for a lot of different reasons, though. Like the stress of being on a murder trial, detoxing nope. from pills. Yeah, there's your a wife lot. and son are dead and you're the reason why. Yeah. So he um, he has been uh, accused of how many different counts of 48 charges. He's got 48 charges of financial crimes. Uh totaling 1.3 million dollars and so they indicted him on all that and then they uh added 23 new criminal charges about a year ago to that uh bringing up to a new total of 2.27 million so now he oh, now he's facing a total of 73 charges for a total of over 8.37 million dollars and they investigated him for the murder of his wife and son he was arrested for that. He was indicted for that. And the trial is going on right now. And he decided to take the stand the other day, which is crazy. Like his, he's a lawyer. He should probably know better than that. But if you decide to take the stand, then your lawyers can't stop you. It's your decision. I think from what I've seen just in the court of public opinion, it kind of helped him. Like, And the other thing is you mentioned all those dozens of financial crimes he's going to prison for a long time even if he doesn't get if he gets acquitted of the murder mm -hmm. like because he's admitted in the the murder trial like yes i was stealing all this money i was a piece of shit this that and the other but i didn't kill my wife and son so like he's gonna go to jail for a very long time yeah his strategy is i'm going to admit to a bunch of bad stuff that i did and so you can trust me when I say that I didn't do the really, really bad thing. Do you, th do you think the uncles hired hitmen to kill uh, Maggie and uh, Paul and set up their brother so he takes the fall for everything so that it puts him away and they don't get fucked because then they started just liquidating assets with Buster out in Vegas? So I, I do kind of want to talk about the trial a little bit yeah. because there isn't there's a good bit of circumstantial evidence, and I 100% believe he had something to do with this one way or the other. Yes. But there is not really a lot to any physical evidence 
that he shot them. They don't have a murder weapon. They don't have um, really anything. He yeah. hired. Well, they can't. They can't specify. I, my understanding is with a shotgun, you can't do ballistics tests on a shotgun because the way that the buckshot or whatever type of shot comes out of the barrel, it doesn't have those same grooves that a bullet would have, where you can match it up to a gun 100. percent But they have the rifle also. But they don't have they don't have either gun. They don't have either murder weapon. They don't know for a fact. Yeah, they don't have. They do not have a murder weapon they can point to, uh, which is bad for the prosecution. And also, there was I saw one person, uh, like an engineer, get called to the stand that tried to break down the trajectory of the bullets, and he was saying that somebody would have to be like five two to five four to to fire the uh, AR fifteen style gun Whoa. in a way where that would make sense. Now he could also be like crouching on the ground and that would that would work yeah. too. Like so it's not the, like a hundred it doesn't exclude him from firing the gun. In the long grass. Yeah, but they're saying that the way the trajectory of the bullets means that it was it was fired um at a location that was similar to like where his kneecap would be if he was standing up. The other thing is I haven't seen a very strong motive for him to have done this. They kind of insinuated, like in that documentary, that his marriage wasn't good. Okay. Um, I think the prosecution was like kind of said that his financial crimes were about to come to light and that that's why I, I don't really buy that. I don't think many people do. There's not like a strong motive. Now, there's a motive for a lot of people in that town that hate that family. Yeah. Um. So I, I do think he had something to do with this one way or the other. Um. But it's just a weird... He also has a he's got a history of hiring hitmen. He does. He's and he's a weird dude and they've had a lot of deaths tied to them. I don't know. The whole thing is weird. But I, I it seems like th there should be more stone cold evidence against him than there really is. Yeah. Yeah. You would think that there would be a murder weapon in this situation, right? He also took uh, he was found with his wife's phone. After. OK, the wife had left the phone in the the uh, gator or the four wheeler, whereas um, Paul's phone was found on him. You know, what's wild is I, I read that the uh, the prosecution was able to extract data from his phone. Alex phone that shows that uh, like around the time that he that the murders would have been committed, he had a lot of steps being registered on his phone when he said that he was like in the house on the couch, just getting ready to go visit his his parents at the hospital, like just doing normal stuff around the house. They said that his phone registered a high amount of activity, which is something that I never even thought of that your phone is definitely like, you can go back and look and see what your steps were. Like Apple Health, yeah. At, yeah, at any given time. So they're using that to, to pin it on him too. Huh. I, I, think, I think he was definitely involved in it. I don't know if there was a second person that was also shooting Two having two guns to commit that murder seems that unless you're like intentionally trying to throw the cops off, which so you might have been doing but like taking, having a shotgun and a rifle that maybe, you switch back and forth from. They're taking the jury. I think it might be tomorrow to the house to show them the because one of the witnesses they called said that when you see it, the evidence suggests two shooters. Hmm. So they're taking them to view the property to show that theory. Yeah. I mean, w one thing that I can kind of predict in, Two uncles. in this is that like there's going to be more stuff that comes out about this family. We have not we have not heard heard the end of all the details behind them. Uh, and they're they're definitely investigating what happened with um, the the kid's death back in 20, what, 15? Yeah. There's some there's still more shit that we have to uncover from this family. And they still think the Miss Gloria's death was because of maybe her discovering drugs, some of uh, Alex drugs and Alec pushing her down the stairs. Mm -hmm. That's why he claims he wasn't there. I've also seen theories that they think Maggie's the one that pushed her down the stairs. Yeah. About infidelity. Interesting. So uh, I think he definitely had something to do with it, though. Alec is involved in in the double homicide as far as i'm concerned i i feel i told i told billy this earlier i don't know if he's the one that pulled the trigger 
but he knows who did. If you're if you're swimming through a, a painkiller addiction to the extent that he says that he was popping all those pills, he was fucked up all the time mm -hmm. at the time. And the stress of his son and his son's uh, boating homicide trial or whatever it's classified as, as well as him being, you know, getting getting caught for all these like his entire career has been a sham mm -hmm. the stress of all that happening parents have killed their families for less than that before because they were he was so worried like throughout this trial you can see he was so worried about their name and their reputation that he would almost i think rather have paul be dead than have his name be tarnished yeah and and what happened with the vegas trip uh basically buster was caught his he was just such a ginger buster's the biggest ginger out of all of them buster was caught and that's why he was so recognizable he was there was a picture taken of him at a vegas blackjack table a roulette table and during one of the jailhouse calls you hear him tell like yeah apparently i'm a national figure they took a picture of me and uh, i think one of the uncles at the table while they're out there trying to liquidate all the assets to get as much money as they could it's tough to lay low when you're that conspicuous yeah when your hair is that red i would dye my hair yeah, I would never. Yeah, I would never think that it was a Murdoff. Like somebody came in here with like dark black hair. He was in a mask. Yeah, he's been wearing a mask a lot in court. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about at the at the blackjack table. Yeah, yeah, he was wearing a mask, uh, but in court, Alex been wearing a mask a lot, and I think that's just it makes you look more frail. Mm -hmm. It's like how when when uh, he should have stayed bald, the bald made him look really yeah. skinny and well, old. Yeah, it's like when um. I'm trying to remember the name of the lady that was accused of murder that she just started wearing glasses out of nowhere to her trial. Oh, um, Jody something. Jo was that Jody Arias? Yeah, I think. Yeah, it's like, look like a librarian mm -hmm. when you go to trial. If you're a guy and you're on trial for murder, I think the strategy is like, look extremely sick. The mask probably masks emotions too. Yeah. Also, you just shouldn't take the stand. Also Actually, you know what? Why do you say that? Here, here's the thing. You should, well, for, legally, you should never take this. There's so, little that can go right and a lot that can go wrong. Yeah. The only thing I would say is if I was accused of a murder I didn't commit, I would want to scream it out loud to anybody that would listen to me like, I'm innocent. This this is not true. Uh, so it probably takes – it would take a lot if I was truly innocent for my lawyers to be like, don't take the stand right now. Yeah. I, I, I would agree. But isn't that, like, that's probably the logic that they're going by, right? It might be, yeah. What about you, Arian? Would you rather have a, a jury or a judge? Uh, it depends on what the crime was. If it was murder, um, nah, what well, well, shit? Nah, I think I'd go with a jury. Yeah, I, w I would too, because Big T, it's the same logic, right? Even if you were innocent of everything you'd rather have take your chances one out of 12 people yeah i, I think it's, uh, it's, it's it's also different in my my predicament than, than big t judges see a lot of criminals right judges see a lot of and like uh they have a bias towards how people look period uh jurors do too this is backed up by data but if i possibly have a jury of my peers they'd be less likely to have a bias towards me because of how I look. And so I would rather take the chances of getting a jury of my peers rather than a judge who sees criminals all day long that possibly look like me. Um, also, uh, in some states, you can't get a bench trial for first degree murder, it looks like. That has to be tried by a jury. So do we have any idea how long this trial is gonna take? I mean, nobody really knows. I think it's concluding. Okay. Relatively soon. Mm -hmm. I think it's been going like three weeks. They're going to convict this guy, right? I don't know. I think so. Because what if he gets found not guilty, he'll go to prison, certainly. Not for... Wouldn't they have to have another trial for that, though? Yeah. I, I don't know how long that trial will be because he admitted to everything on the stand. So he admitted to the financial crimes. I think they'll... But it, but you would it, still have to go through it and uh, like the arraignment process. I don't think you should be like, oh, I did that. I don't know. I don't know enough about it, but I, that wouldn't make sense to me. Well, they could just give him a deal since he's already admitted. True. Yeah. Be like, we've got you on these 73. It would be 
180 years will give you 40. Then he's going to get, but before that happens, he'll probably be released on his own, right? I guess, yeah. So he'll, he'll be free for a little bit. I mean, he'll be under indictment, but he'll... He going to die. He's probably going to hide another hitman. Yeah, he going to die. Yeah. Or he'll just do it himself at that point. I would be shocked if this guy lived to uh, the second trial if he does get off. Yeah, it seems like there's no way he um, lives a uh, lives out the rest of his days happily. No. He's either going, <laughs> no. He's either going to prison for this <laughs> or he'll go to prison for the financial stuff long enough that on 70 charges, if they're all six months, that's enough that's, that's the rest of his life. Yeah. And then... If he somehow got like, yeah, he'll probably just kill himself. I think so. Under the caveat that I have no boots on the ground like Billy in this situation <laughs> and no no locked in sources with a finger on the pulse of law enforcement. My it, it seems to me. I would envision this being a case of Alec and an unnamed accomplice being in cahoots committing these murders it does feel like there could be two shooters in it because the shotgun and the rifle mm -hmm. you hear one blast if you're let's say who got shot first do we even know i think paul got shot first so if, if you hear the gunshot go off paul gets shot uh two times in rapid succession and then he switches to a rifle and then is able to shoot the wife it's not it's not impossible, but it seems I, I bet if you were to look at double murders that take place across the country, very, very small percentage of them are done using two weapons. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't one of the weapons like a super unique kind of uh, AR. Mad Dog. The Blackout 300. Yes. There you go. So it's like uh, it, I, I'm, I'm with you. I don't I don't obviously don't know, but it's like it's it just seems like so much effort to switch guns yeah but, but if that's what you're going for I, I get that too i don't know i'm actually not sure i just know it's a shotgun in the ar maybe he like popped like paul might have been hit with two different kind of guns like he may have been finished off with the shotgun like he was shot once didn't, and then he wasn't dying didn't end him. or like let's say this you're you're alec murdoch you hire a guy to kill him the guy shoots both of them uh Paul's shot in the chest. Alec Murdoch sees it all, and the guy runs off, and then you realize that your son's still alive, and you have to finish him off with your shotgun. Mm -hmm. Well, because he was shot in the chest and then up into the brain. I mean, I don't... that's but that's the hard part about convicting him is that you have to be, one, beyond a reasonable doubt that he's the one that pulled the trigger on both of them. Like, they're, like conspiracy yeah. to murder is a different charge. I, I think they should lock up the entire family. Well, it's <laughs> just him and Buster left. Better safe than sorry. Is yeah, Buster's, Buster's committed jail. enough pre-crime. Yes. I'm I'm a fan of law and order, but six months the line, and let's observe <laughs> and then we'll reevaluate. The line yeah. stops here. You, no more Murdaws. Yeah. No more. We've had enough Murdaws yeah. in South mm -hmm. Carolina. What about is the is the grandfather randolph is he still alive no he died in 21 okay he might have died of covid okay D can't confirm that but he passed away either from the stress and guilt or something yeah all right what a fuck up though like you have this family fortune and it's all it's all thrown away because you're just bad humans that's crazy it, it kind of makes sense though or i mean it makes sense for a lot of reasons that um Alex Murdoch, Alec Murdoch is the one that did it, but he has motives kind of to kill both of them because he didn't want to tarnish Paul's name. And then if Maggie was going to a forensic accountant and looking at diver divorce attorneys, like th they're not reasons to kill someone, but that could be, you know. Yeah. Look, if, if you're the type of person that would murder somebody. Right. And then... if you're like so <laughs> bagged up on opioids. Yeah. Looking back at the Snapchat videos they recovered, uh, I don't think he was in any state of mind to be able to kill his kids because he was literally adjusting a tree. I don't but know. But that, I mean, that could have uh, just been like a, yeah. one Snapchat video. That's so out of context. What really matters is that he was at the property. That's very that impressive, time. Mad Dog. Yes. What? You, what you, you took like a piece of video and you're, and you're, as a Zoomer, you're able to understand this this five second clip 
might not tell the entire story about everything that was going on at the time. Thank you. That's good. That's good. I'm hopeful for future generations. Like the adjusting the tree, I don't think like puts him in the light of like he couldn't he he couldn't kill someone. He was playing with the tree on his property. I don't property. know. I just I I have this a This man was time. so full of life. Right. Yeah, like that doesn't really I don't know. It was just like it looked he was probably doing busy work waiting around for the hitman to come. I mean, what would he have been able to get away with saying he was visiting his parents in the hospital? Did he have like some sort of setup where he had like he was able to establish that as his as his alibi? I think or is it just purely the the luck of his son using Snapchat that hemmed him up? The luck. He probably had no idea he took that Snapchat. Well, yeah. No, either way. no, no, no. Also, also, their OnStar in his car caught him coming home and coming back. So it wasn't just the Snapchat that ruined his alibi. The OnStar tracked his. Um, Did he say why location. he lied about the alibi? Because he's trying not to get convicted for murder, and he's just. I. He just. He said he was like, "I'm sorry, I lied." He basically was like, "Once you get wrapped up in one lie, it's hard to get." Out yeah. Of it. Yeah, he, he used the, it snowballed defense. Yeah, which, which is, is not a good defense. To he realized that uh, as an attorney, someone that's been around court cases his entire life, that he was going to be suspected heavily. So he wanted to try to get his name out of the contention for being a suspect. And then he gave them that lie. And then he lied about the lie. Then he lied about another lie. I think he said on the on the stand, he goes, oh, what a tangled web we weave. Yes, he did. <laughs> yeah. he Was that Shakespeare? <laughs> That said that I, I don't never, I don't I remember who it, I think I think it might be that I don't remember but just so, he's so poetic at the fucking <laughs> on the stand murder trial yeah and it was it the that was an answer to a question I I, I forget what the question was so I, but it was <coughs> something along the lines of like you've told all these lies this that and the other like what and he was just you know what a tangled web we weave yeah like, <laughs> it it was Nate Oates boys will be boys <laughs> about a murder yeah yeah. Billy, you could you could learn to use that line. I'm so itchy right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't real. think I said that on this podcast. I got attacked by fleas, and the Benadryl's wearing off again. Billy has fleas. J Why do you I have fleas? I had fleas. Why it's do you have fleas? His dog got fleas, and then Billy got fleas from his dog. I That's don't know. Saying you yeah. lay down with dogs, you wake up with fleas. That's yeah. That's also Shakespeare. That's a, that's, that's, <laughs> I literally was on my couch. I was literally on my couch watching this documentary that I started getting bitten, and I was like, "Holy shit, he's got fleas!" Then I just dumped him in a flea shower and took a flea shower. You deserve myself. it. All you dog owners that get fleas, you deserve it. Stop it. it. Is what it is. Stop it. So it wasn't Shakespeare. It was Sir Walter Scott. Oh, okay. Hey guys, the, the city MD closes at eight. I think I'm gonna run over. <laughs> okay, Billy's. Uh, if this was NBA injury report, Billy football uh, not expected to return. Parentheses fleas. <laughs> no, no lower body. <laughs> it's NHL. Yeah, yeah. NHL will be lower body injury. Oh, God, is it lower body or is it upper? It's uh, full body. All lower body. All right. So okay. Are you your, your balls? No, no. Just like like legs. Okay. Um, that boy speed. really, yeah, that boy really luck. got fleas. That's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the first I've heard of something like this. So this this could be um, this is very funny if if this is true. This also could be Billy's most hilarious lie, where he it has is, to like, no no no, it's not. He told me about it earlier. It yeah, is seven thirty p.m. Yeah, so you know he might but, have been planning this for a while, and he's like, got to go meet up with his boys for some beers. Yeah, he's like, I've got the perfect. Perfect excuse. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna tell people all day I've got fleas. I will, say, mm -hmm. I will say though, I was talking to Billy earlier. Oh, what a tangle with we we. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to Billy earlier, and he was saying that Whitey got fleas, and I was like, oh my god, that's so like that sucks. And I go, can humans get like infected with fleas? I that's a simple a simple question, and he goes, oh, you can get bit, but you can't get infected. Yeah, he's, he's it's all part of his master plan. He seems to have been bringing up the fleas conversation with a lot of people today. Yep. He's like, first I'll go to Mad Dog. She's the nicest. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody know if mm. Billy frequents any Tuesday night eight o'clock bar trivia's? Anything like that? Going back to Hoboken. Oh. Yeah. What? Where would if I was a Billy? Where would I be? Oh, he also said, not to, not to, you know. 
convict him, but he also said he was driving Dukes home from work today. Mm. Him and Dukes back at it. Someone get Dukes on Avery, the line. Go, go see if Dukes is out there. He said he was staying late for some college basketball thing. This would be the best Billy lie ever because he also he also brought it up on part of my tape. Did he? Yeah, yeah. He was like. Mm. I think it was his hot seat was my hot seat is me. I meant to so. mention this earlier, but this goes along with this Billy thing in the in the 911 call that Alec Murdoch made. And I try not to judge those very often because you never know. I, I think it's generally unfair to How someone reacts. judge someone who is going through something like that. But he they're like he explains what happens and the 911 operator goes, OK, um, don't touch them. Just wait for the cops. Goes, oh, um, I already did. I did. I checked to see if they had a pulse. So to, to give himself an out, like, I guess if they had DNA on them or whatever. Uh -huh. um, that's Billy, you know, has brought up today several times this mm -hmm. flea thing. It's very so. interesting. I hope it's a lie. Oh, my God. I hope this is a lie. That would be hilarious. Me too, honestly. <laughs> but again, I've never I've never heard of a human getting. No, you can get you can get bit by fleas for sure. What's the verdict? Uh, he left by himself. Okay. Okay. There's a good chance that Billy does actually have fleas. I think so. But it's yeah. but it would be very funny if, if this comes out on Thursday. Up. Yeah. If any of y'all out there in New York see Billy on Tuesday night at a bar, let us know if you had seen it. Yep. I will let say. Us, let us know. Billy, if if Billy did that, his alibi was pretty good based on the story he told me. But. That'd be that a lot be making it making up a whole flea story. That's a weird story. That's that. Eh, well. Billy said weirder things, I guess. Also, it would make sense. Yes, it would. Um, do we have any voicemails we want to get into? We do. All right, so well, we all think he did it, right? <laughs> yeah, he was involved. In some form or fashion. He, I would say that he, he killed somebody. He's killed someone. There's five bodies connected to them in the past six years. He's killed somebody. And World's better without Murdochs in general. So. Lock, lock them up. Yeah. But interesting documentary. Man, was it good. Okay. Um, okay, ready? The macro dosing. Brian from Colorado. You're all beautiful. Um, I wanted to ask if Big T has ever actually mowed a lawn in his life. <laughs> I'm watching the stream and it seems like he's doing his edging work prior to using the big mower which is just completely backwards and then um i guess everybody what was your least favorite chore growing up thank you and stay beautiful okay this is the highest man alive <laughs> couple things mowed many lawns i don't know that i've ever used a trimmer before i've just like cut grass Pe but people are so pressed about how I cut the grass in the video game. It's unbelievable. I look down at the chat every time and they're like, you're cutting it wrong. You need to be doing this, that, and the other. It's using a, a mower that is, it's crazy. The the amount that people care how you cut the grass on the video hey, game. It just means they care, man. That's all, man. Don't take it. Yeah, you know, they enjoy it. That's I guess it's better to have people who care about big team mowers than not, but it is a bit much. But yeah, they're to into it. To answer the second part of the question, uh, least favorite chore. Taking I got one. Taking Go out ahead. the trash only because it was so easy that I would always be like, "Oh, I'll go do that in five minutes," and then I wouldn't do it. And then I'd be, and then I'd get yelled at for not doing it, but it was always just so easy to do that it was easy to put off. I guess that makes sense. Easy to do, easy not to do. Right. Yeah. Yep. Mine was. This is very. Oh my god. So when we was growing up, when we finally moved to a house, we moved to this small little house, um, and the AC unit was on the roof. I don't know not a, lot, a lot about AC units, but usually what happens is like. You put the, the pads on the AC unit, like you had to replace the pad with filters or whatever, or like it was like they look like ramen noodles, like these little pads on the on the things. And there, there's like a water unit that would wet the pads to help the cool air come in, right? Well, the water thing broke on ours, and so me and my brother used to have to take turns 
when the when the AC was on and it wasn't blowing cool air, we had to go on the roof with the hose and wet the pads. So we're literally <laughs> fucking seven, eight years old, dog, climbing on the roof, wetting the pads to my dad's liking to make sure that the air was uh, was cold. Fucking insane. I like that. That's awesome. It was not awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. Bad chores. I hated unloading the dishwasher. I liked loading it for some reason. Me too. Because I think you can just like put whatever you, uh, no rhyme or reason, you just mm-hmm. throw shit in there basically. And I hated unloading that shit. So that would be it. My dad also uh, bought a wood splitter at one point and uh, he had me go out and like split a bunch of wood for him without telling me that, uh, well, he, there's no way for him to know. But the wood pile was infested with brown recluse spiders. Oh, no. And I didn't know that. And I got bit. I think four times by like, I think there were baby brown recluse spiders. So that sucked. That was then that quickly became my least favorite chore. Damn. I don't fuck with spiders. Mm-mm. Maddie. Um, least favorite chore. I hated, this is kind of like big tease where it was just so easy. I didn't want to do it was, um, bringing my clothes down to the laundry room, like from, upstairs to the basement i just the two flights of stairs got me and i don't know why and it was so stupid but it would be the same thing of like it was so fucking easy and i just never wanted to do it two flights is a lot of flights that's what i'm saying yeah that's... or bringing it back up like when the laundry's done then you got to bring it up the two flights and i would put it off until like then my laundry would overflow because i was putting it off for so long then i got to do two trips and it's a whole thing but yeah i don't know Everybody. Uh, nothing was worse than having a snow day and then your dad telling you to wake up and shovel the driveway. There was nothing worse than that. Yeah, but counter- you got a snow day and you're inside hanging out or you're outside with your friends, but no, you got to shovel the driveway. Um, counterpoint to that, when you finish shoveling the driveway, the hot chocolate when you get inside afterwards mm-hmm. definitely hits different. That's a great cup of hot chocolate. Yeah, that is true. I'm not like a huge hot chocolate guy only because I'm not like like hot drinks are tough. That's ridiculous. What? I just don't like hot chocolate. It's just okay. No, that burns my mouth. No, that was one of those not, things that I didn't have to do like as a super girl. Super hot. Um, are we good for the next voicemail? You. Hey, this is Joe from Baton Rouge. Wanna say I love you all. My favorite podcast on the internet, only one. Um, my question is, what do you think is the greatest day in human history? And I'm not saying like just your own personal history, but just humanity as a whole. So love to hear what y'all say. Um, Arian represent I'm from New Mexico as well, so it's good to have it and then native on the pod. Um, I love y'all. Um, Big T, I don't agree with you on really anything in the world, but I still love you. So, um, hopefully, talk to you later. All right. Bye. That's fair enough. <laughs> um, what, what was the, what was the question? <laughs> he said the greatest day, the greatest day in human history ever, not just yours. Oh man. That's a really good question. I would say the day that our ancestors, one of the motherfuckers, whoever it was, discovered how to curate fire. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good day. I'm talking about our, our diets change, the, the nutrients we have change. It, it spurred agriculture, industrial revolution, everything. We can live in different places. Mm-hmm. That's a good day. Now, it's a good day for the person that discovered it, but then it took a while for that to catch on. For them to go to like the next village and be like, yo, check this shit out. I got yeah. that. I got that fire. <laughs> I got that. I got that. Fire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like that was, that was, you know what? That was a good day for that one person that ended up granting great days to so many other people on subsequent days after that. Invention. Yeah. Like a million years later, he's still out here. Like the gift that kept giving. Yeah. Shout out. Was it Prometheus? Stole fire from the gods, right? I don't know. I might just be making that up. That's a very that's a good choice. Electricity is probably up there too. 
Yeah. Um, the day Nintendo 64 came out was a great day. <laughs> Do you guys, you guys probably don't. Ari knows what I'm talking about. I remember that. Did you get? I didn't have one. I didn't either, but my friend no. Did. What year? Yeah, the homie, the homie had one. It's probably two, no, two, uh, 90, 96, 90, yeah, 97? I was going to say 96 sounds about right. Wasn't, wasn't even born. Not alive. Mm -mm. So 96, N64 comes out. Your friend had one. What game did he have right off the bat? Uh, he had, um, I remember it. It was uh, Star Fox. And then uh, Mario Kart. Mario Kart 64 yeah. was fucking, it, that was a banger, dog. Those are great so, games, too. So all the whole, like all the, all the kids in the neighborhood would all go to his house and go play. And then he ended up getting Madden, too. Madden was, Madden was fire on N64. Yeah. Then GoldenEye came out. GoldenEye. Yep. I remember. Holy shit. I went over to my friend Mark's house when he got it. And he just had, he had the starter pack. So it came with. In 64, and then it had uh, Super Mario World or whatever that was. Maybe it was like Mario 64, whatever the first one yeah, was. Yeah, Mario 64 was like the first one was like three, 3D. Uh, you have 360 view of Mario. That really, it changed the game. I can't stress enough how much different video games were before in 64. Every game was just the, the two dimensional. Your character would travel rightwards across the screen. <laughs> for, and then you just keep doing that. You just try to make it as far right as possible. Big T, that's really why. That's why. That's why I liked. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's why I loved um, uh, Mike Tyson's Punch Out on Nintendo, because it was it wasn't like all the all the other games, and it had a little different element to it than just left to right. Yeah, yeah, you're going forward, backward, forward, backward. Mm -hmm. That was yeah. In sixty four was a good day. What do you think, Big T? Find it interesting. Nobody's picked the day Hitler died. A lot of pro Hitler people on here. <laughs> he was, he was That's what I might go with personally. I mean, I'm I'm anti Hitler. I don't know about y'all. It's okay, fair. But also on that day, Hitler killed Hitler. So that was Hitler's biggest dub. <laughs> sure. I honestly like this is such nice. a this is such like a meta question. I don't I don't know what my answer is honestly. Yeah. Uh, whatever day air conditioning was invented. That's, mm. that's my one. That's yeah. the greatest invention in human history. Air conditioning? It's definitely up there. Air, yeah, I would say fire fire and air conditioning toe to toe, probably. Or the chair. Fire isn't an invention, though. Discovery. Discovery. Electricity or air conditioning. You can't have air conditioning without electricity. That's fair. Um, I, I'm still going AC. It is nice walking into a nice cool room when it's 95 degrees outside. There is but nothing about, better. But think about think about not being able to see when the sun goes away, and then all of a sudden being able to see when the sun goes. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's mm -hmm. wild. Like that's life changing. Shit. I'm kind of down for that. I think I think we might need a, a reset. I would be I would I'll be with that actually. Cut out all lights. I think that would be the dopest shit in the world is to like have the world agree on this. A day with no electricity, just one day out of the year, or maybe once every five years, so that we could see the stars that they're supposed to be seeing. Oh. That would be fucking fantastic. You could fantastic. just become you could just become a Hasidic Jew. Yep. Call it touch grass day. <laughs> Everybody has to go touch grass. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Touch grass day. I kind of like that. Yeah, turn off all the ready, lights. Ready, ready player one uh, vibes. Now there, yeah, there would be a. Uh, you think there'd be a purge on that day? Probably. Yeah, there'd probably be some stupid people for sure. Some bad shit would happen. Yeah. Been at least you get to die looking at the stars. Every day above ground is a good day. That's what I always say. Oh, the tangle web we weave. It might be Pitbull. I don't know. Is that a Pitbull quote? Yeah. <laughs> I knew my rent was going to be <laughs> Go. This, this podcast has range. Pitbull yeah. and Shakespeare? Uh-huh. <laughs> um, you have, I have another one? One more, yeah. Okay. Which is maybe my favorite voicemail that I've that I've heard on this podcast. It better be, because I was going to say, I don't want to pull a Billy, but how many voicemails are we doing at 8 p.m.? We have one more. This last one. <laughs> hey, guys. My name's Ryan. I'm... Uh... I'm here, I have a couple questions for you guys here, but the questions aren't actually from me. I'm here with 
Miss Joyce's third grade class here in Dripping Springs, Texas. So I guess a couple of the students have listened to a few episodes and they have submitted a few questions for you cool. guys that I will read out. Youngsters. The first question is from Johnny. Hey, PFT, what is your favorite color? Blue. Easy. My next question I have here is from Timmy. Timmy asks, hey, Mad Dog, what did you want to be when you grew up? <laughs> and our last yes, question here is from Sarah. Sarah asks, hey, Aaron, you seem to be awfully dismissive of all the Hunter Biden stories. <laughs> Would you be equally as dismissive if it was um, Donald Trump Jr. doing the same thing? <laughs> Just a question. This third grade that's class sounds pretty woke. From Miss Joyce's third grade class. Um, thank you to the students for submitting the questions. As for myself, I love you guys. Um, I listen to every episode. You guys are the best. Um, and on a closing note, I think you guys are all all mid. Except for Big T. Big T's a legend. But I mean, hey, you, got, you guys are mid. Somebody's got to humble you, right? This guy's based. All right. Uh, great. Thank you for the questions, Mr. Joyce's third grade class. <laughs> so, Aaron, you will be playing the role of Patrick Ewing. <laughs> <laughs> Going to the class. Uh, what was the, it was it was if I'm I'm dismissive of Hunter Biden's doings, would I be equally dismissive of Donald Trump Jr.'s doings? Yes. Couldn't give a shit less about what the sons are doing. I assume everybody's corrupt and their families. And so they're probably doing bad shit, but I don't care unless it affects policy and how people live their lives. Miss Joyce's third grade class. Yeah, I thought that was funny. <laughs> that was a good question. Now, if it's Jared Kushner, who's his son-in-law, who had like an official position. You remember Jared Kushner? He solved the Middle mm -hmm. East process. You remember that? Yeah, it's peaceful over there now. Can't argue with results. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That does it for this week's macrodosing. Thank you guys for listening. And also shout out to... Uh, Billy, uh, Big T, Avery, Mad Dog, and Arian for recording on a Tuesday night. Appreciate you guys. Of course. So um, we will see you guys next week. Big guest coming to the studio next week. And Arian. For next Thursday's show. And Arian coming to New York. So Arian, we will figure out the golf situation as well because we will get, we'll get a few holes in. Perfect. All right. Love you guys.